Hmm. So Jake Paul probably roided up to the gill. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything, but in Caleb's interview, you can see acne right around his, like, oh, like just no. really bad. Yeah. What, what about his nipples? Very erased. I mean, everyone saw that. Did you yep. give any... What's your nipple analysis of Jake Paul? I mean, anyone can see they were coned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Super coned. Absolutely coned nipples. So you can fucking... <laughs> On today's part of my take, we have one of our favorite guests, Jerry O'Connell, back in studio... It's uh, our fantasy football preview. So we do our fantasy football preview with Jerry O'Connell. And bonus, we have Field Yates and Mike Florio. You're probably going to start listening to the Field Yates interview and be like, what's going on? Well, we got Florio again. So just tune in because it's fucking awesome. Uh, We are going to talk hard knocks, cut day, Bryson, Mets, fake high schools, Guys on Checks, a loaded show for you, and it's brought to you by our good friends at Dave & Buster's. They are a new sponsor, presenting sponsor for the month of September, Dave & Buster's. Look at PFT. He's got his Buster's bling. Dave & Buster's adds more winning to anything and everything from regular Friday nights to first dates and especially to watching the game with the guys. It all gets more ding, ding, ding at D&Bs. And this season, there's no better place to watch football than at Dave & Buster's because you get more of everything that makes game day so great. Dave & Buster's has 40-foot wide TV screens that you can uh, get the best view of every game. Imagine watching the game at a regular sports bar, not us, on a tiny 12-inch plasma mounted to the other side of the room. Not us, because we're going to Dave & Buster's. And D&B's has new menu items exclusive to this football season, like the new chef-crafted Blue Moon Pickles. And the beverage game at Dave & Buster's is always at the top, because they have cocktails and beers to choose from. The best part is they now come in a tailgate-sized drink tower, so all the fellas can enjoy. Eat, ever shown up to a watch party and only find its standing room only? Well, the whole couch is taken, and there's not even a place to awkwardly perch on an armrest. Not a problem at D&B's because there's more than enough space to invite the whole friend group. And if you got that one person who doesn't want to watch the game, well, you're at a Dave & Buster's. You're going to have a great time. This is one of those uh, advertisers that we have that is seamless because you know we love Dave & Buster's. We talk about it all the time. So go right now. Check out <coughs> Excuse me, Dave & Buster's. I got so excited. I started to choke. That's how much I love Dave and Buster's. So go watch the game, big game at D&B's, new menu, new uh, beverage items, same old games, awesome time. There's nothing better than Dave and Buster's. Add more ding, ding, ding to your day- game day with more food, more drinks, and more screen only at Dave and Buster's. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Dave & Buster's, the only place to watch football this fall. Go check out a DNB l- l- uh, close to you. Today is Wednesday, September 1st. Whoa. Oh, boy. Hey, somebody wake up the guy from Green Day. Yep. Football is back. No, wait. When is it? Oh, it's when September ends. Yeah. And then still, also, what's the Rod Stewart? But make sure that you wake him up. Uh, uh, Maggie, it's late September, September, and I think I should be back favorite. at school. That's my favorite. So, it is September 1st. Uh, we've done it again, boys. We have watched Hard Knocks, and it sucks. And I don't know what we're doing, um, but we're here for the people. Future That's me was our, right. That is yeah. our dedication to you, uh, the listeners. It's 11-11 right now. It's 11-11. Make a wish. I wish that Hard Knocks was over. Yeah. And it is. And there's still another episode we're not going to... They did kind of screw us because they put all the cuts for next week. Yep. Usually, traditionally, uh, when there are four preseason games, we get to see a little bit of the cuts this week where they walk into the office. Hey, I love you. You're the perfect football player. If there's anything we can do to you or do for you, please let me know. Now, don't let the door hit you on your ass on your way Mm -hmm. out. Uh, They they teased us with the cuts. What was your mojo moment from this week? Uh, My mojo moment was Mike McCarthy showing up in his party shirt looking... Like a watermelon. Yeah. Yeah. The the Mike McCarthy party shirt, it looked like it was a hologram of an even bigger shirt. Yes. It was uh, it was playing tricks on the eyes. Th- that's a classic example. Of, like McCarthy's wife probably gets him a like fifty dollar gift card to Kohl's every year for Christmas, and then he just goes in, blacks out, and goes on like a shopping rampage. That's the shirt that he bought this year at Kohl's yes. with his new money. Yes. Also, the uh, other notable moment was the stand up comedy routine where they tried to do stand up comedy with only inside jokes that the locker room would get. Yep. Um, there was also more. <laughs> we were all wondering how the whole contact saga from last week. 
wow. with Quan Hardy was going to finish up uh, this week. They they had him in contacts. Yep. The human body craves contacts. Yes. Quan Hardy was like, you know what? I'm going to lose the goggles. No more Eric Dickerson. He saw how he looked. And he played without goggles this week. So that was – oh, also, Jerry Jones is able to wink. Yeah. I didn't think that was possible given the Botox situation. And it was – But he wink, he's only able to wink when he's in the presence of Whataburger. Yes. Um, all right, last last thing before we go to all the NFL cuts. Uh, just a little warning. When you listen to the Field Yates, Mike Florio interview, the start of it, you're going to be very, very confused because we're not part of it. Just wait because – we got Florio again. We gotten deeper. He's going to have major trust issues from what we've done to him this year. But definitely listen and follow along. Nailed him. Yes. Nailed uh, Florio. Last thing before we get to the other cuts in the NFL that we actually did get to talk about. Uh, Jerry Jones, that was so – that was like when they put the cliffhanger at the end of an episode and you're like, oh, I got to watch next week. They just showed Jerry Jones talking about Whataburger – at the end, and you're like, wow, I really want some more Jerry Jones. There were probably like nine or ten different scenes in this Hard Knocks, though, where I watched it, and I was just like, this is the stuff they decide to keep in right. this week. Like, there was one time where a guy came up to his defensive line coach and was like, hey, good meeting earlier. They yeah. kept they kept that they kept in. That in. That's the gold stuff that mm -hmm. we're getting. So, yeah, next week we're going to see Gucci Danucci. They caught him today. No spoilers. No spoilers, but Gucci Nucci gets caught. <laughs> Don't probably, tell me. Probably similar to the Cam Newton thing where they're like, you know what? You're going to get a starting job somewhere, so we want you to have the pick of the litter, Gucci. Okay, moving on from Hard Knocks. Uh, cut day in the NFL. I would say that the Lions going with no kickers would lead the uh, cut day stories, but Cam Newton got cut. He did, yeah. So that's it's Mac Jones time in New England. That's right. Hey, Big Cat, have you noticed Mac is Cam backwards? Oh. That's the new Saber metrics. That's, Mac it's Attack. The hottest in the street. Mac Attack is going to be the starting quarterback for your New England Patriots. People are saying, like, why did they cut Cam Newton? I think it's actually because Bill was probably like, hey, I think Cam could probably try to get a starting job somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe if somebody got hurt or if there's a team out there that's looking for a starting quarterback still. Um, so that's probably why they cut him loose, so that he didn't have to stick around as a backup. Shout out to Cam Newton for being uh, ever so gracious in his Instagram message where he continued to use his font. I really want to see how far he would go with that font. Like if he was remembering uh, like a tragedy, if he was his, I don't know, his tombstone. His, his tombstone. His obituary has to yeah. be written in that font. Because like getting cut and, and being like, hey, nothing but good things. I, I was... I shouldn't have been shocked, but I was a little shocked when I saw the font. Do you think that if Cam, heaven forbid, if he had like one of the STDs that you have to hit up everybody that you've ever been with, yeah. you think he'd send yes. a text, be like, hey, I got the herp. <laughs> yes. Might want to get that checked out. Yes. Yes, I think it would be that way. I think he would too. And yeah, he was gracious. He actually gave one of the all-time best high fives that I've ever seen when Mac got, he got pulled out of the game. Uh, was that Sunday? And Cam just like stalked him on the sideline, made him give him a high five. Got him a high five. I, I, I actually Good think teammate. Cam is a great teammate. I think that he'll probably find a place. If he wants to keep playing, he'll definitely have a spot if he wants one later on this I year. don't think he's a starter. He wasn't a starter. He wasn't good enough to be a starter. I mean, he was a starter last year, but he, was, he didn't play like one for the majority of the year. Hank, what are your thoughts before I give one last thought about it? It reminded me of the Malcolm Butler Super Bowl thing again. Like, it was one of those things mm. where it seemed like it was uh, – he could play, he could be on the team, he could contribute. Belichick just is – I guess his thing is just the team comes first. Mac Jones was the starter uh, for the last few weeks and proved he can be the starter. And I don't know if it's because – him, I think what PFT was saying, where it's like him and Cam have a good relationship. Yeah. So I've heard behind the scenes. So it probably was Belichick helping Cam out, but it seemed like one of those things where it didn't make sense at all, really. The the um the the one storyline that was utterly ridiculous to me was people who were trying to shoehorn uh, the vaccine into it because you don't think that played any. No, I think none. That, no. Uh, Here's why. Here's why. Hold on. Here's why. First, obviously, we're a vac we're a pro vaccination podcast. We're all vaccined here, so I'm not Billy, saying don't yeah. get the vaccine. Billy forced us into Billy that. forced us to get the vaccine. I'm the sure there'll now. be one or two. Uh, I think the the Twitter handle was Simone Biles quit. Uh, got mad at me, said I should shove the vaccine up my ass. Last time I said you should get the vaccine, but that, let me just reiterate that that, sa that same guy was <laughs> yeah. mad at Arian today. Yeah, yeah. So Simone Biles quit. Listen, shout I out. I respect a great username. Yeah, shout out. Really bad opinions. I think uh, Bill Belichick would signed someone who was like a super spreader of vaccine if he was really good at quarterback because all he cares about is winning football games and that's the number one thing i really do think he got cut 
because he was not good enough to be the starter. And he probably it's probably a little distracting to have Cam Newton, former MVP, as your backup when you're trying to get your new starter, Mac Jones, to get the confidence and go along and start winning football games. I I, I know what I know that like obviously the best ability is availability and Bill Belichick would is telling people to get vac- vaccinated. But if Cam Newton was MVP Cam Newton, he wouldn't have been cut today because he didn't get the vaccine. Well, if that, Cam that, Newton was vaccinated, though, this whole thing never would have happened. What do you mean? He wouldn't have missed the practices that he had to miss, which then put Mac Jones into playing with the starters, which I think shows he was going to be the starter anyway. So I, Mac I, Jones. I, I think, but I he think wouldn't have gotten Big the Cat's, reps. Big Cat's technically he wouldn't have right. gotten the reps if Cam Newton wasn't when, out of practice. When, he was when, getting first team. When reps Big Cat that. says though that like no, but if the, he the was the MVP. Saying, if he was MVP Cam yes. Newton, he probably would not have been cut. But in this circumstance, it was probably like 50-50 or 60-40 who's the better quarterback. Then you take into Oh, account. I don't think it was no, that close. Well, right now, at right now. And then you take and don't. then you take into account all the variables about it, which is one, okay, Max the younger guy, so he's going to be around for a while. So uh like yes, he, he, there's more of an upside to playing Mac Jones right now. Uh and then also like if Cam Newton isn't vaccinated and he does come into those high risk contact situations, then by nature, like he's going to be much more likely to actually miss time. So okay. I, I think if if it was even close to fifty fifty, that definitely would have made a difference. No, I so if if you want to say a percent of Bill Belichick, like it was, hey, he sh- if he was vaccinated, would help. I I don't think Cam Newton's good anymore. He objectively was bad for the majority of last season. Like, he was good in the Dolphins game. He was good in that Seahawks game. He was really bad, borderline unplayable for a majority of the season. I just don't – maybe it's injuries. I don't know what it is. I think he is not a good quarterback anymore, and Bill Belichick is not going to keep a not a good quarterback on the roster. What percentage of him getting cut do you think was his playlist? <laughs> I'd, uh, say, um, I'd say probably Hank – like – you gonna, Five, go Zoe? you're gonna go Zoe? You're gonna go Zoe on us? Let's never, go Never go full go Zoe. Zoe. <laughs> I, I I don't think it was Zolak saying like he's playing. It's because he's playing rap music on the playlist. I think Zoe was saying like he's not playing good rap music on the playlist. Zoe was like, let me get play some Soldier Boy, not this Drake shit. I I just really think that like Cam Newton I, I, again. He he's a a great quarterback in the one of the actually I'd say it probably the best college football quarterback I've ever seen play. His, his last season at Auburn, when he was playing with an entire offense of guys who didn't play in the NFL and took them to a national championship, is like Mount Rushmore of seasons in, in college football. He was the MVP. He went to the Super Bowl. That guy is not that. He's not that guy anymore. Oh, it, he just isn't. Oh, I, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I just think that like it was the the quarterback competition was like it wasn't like Mac Jones absolutely blew him out of the water. It was. Oh, see, I, it was I, Mac, Mac Jones played pretty well. Cam Newton didn't do badly this preseason. I think Cam Newton played very badly last season. I yeah. agree with you on that. Uh, but it definitely, like, he definitely thought of it. And also, Belichick is smart enough not to do what Urban Meyer did and publicly say that because now they're opening investigation to Urban Meyer and how much the vaccine played yeah. part in cut because it obviously goes against some of the NFLPA stuff. So that's I just, the difference between uh, Bill Belichick and someone who aspires to be Bill. I just Belichick. think we always like look into these things more. Obviously, the vaccine has changed. You know what everyone's perception of these things. At the end of the day, Bill Belichick. It, what he does better than anyone else is a football coach that always wants the team to win. Mm-hmm. Like he, he doesn't think Cam Newton's good anymore. I truly think that. I also like how Hank's brain is wired to be like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but it's just six degrees of that Malcolm Butler interception. Mm-hmm. Like, no, how, no, no, no. The Malcolm we... benching Mal- Malcolm Butler in the second half of the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's referring oh, to. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, because that didn't make sense. No, the, you would have thought that game. Malcolm Butler would have helped win the game. Yeah. Do but we, he didn't play him for reasons that still are unknown. Yeah, I mean, what is Seth That's Wickersham Cam- doing if he hasn't gotten to the bottom of that yet? That's really all. I want that, and I want to know about the Des I'm going to look up the Cam. Jonas Gray type stuff, too. Yep. Slept in through the alarm clock. But that was that, Ryan that, Mallett that, that, also that answer came out. of alarm clock. I think if Cam Newton was vaccinated, he'd still be on the team. Personally. Oh, I don't. See, I think that we forget how truly awful he was at the end of last year. Uh, Hank, that's like, a, he, he had a good re- preseason. All the reports were saying like it's a quarterback battle. Everyone He's has a good well. preseason. Yeah, I guess. I mean, everyone is a preseason hero. That's a great headline, though, is like if Cam Newton was still vaccinated, he would still be a New England Patriot. And that would get some major clicks. Cam Newton, uh, he had one game in the last – from week nine on, he had one game 
over 250 that's when he got fifty yards. What? He got COVID during that time. Right, but then he came back and he was playing for the rest of the season and he had some like 12 for 19 for 69 yards. 69 yards. Remember that game? That was the uh, uh, Chargers game. Remember how bad that was? It was really bad. It was really, really yes. bad. That's and again, he might be injured. I'm not saying he's not injured. Like He could be injured. I, he could maybe somehow find that guy, but I don't think that guy's there right now. He, he definitely somewhat remembered how to throw a football during the offseason because he looked different. I watched the entire uh, football team Patriots preseason game. Cam Newton, he looked not like a great quarterback, but he looked a lot better in terms of him, his mechanics than he was at those points last year where it looked like he was throwing a hatchet. Yeah, and and obviously having him there if you're trying to have – if Mac Jones is a starter, you said it yourself, where it's like if you start with Cam Newton, then you can go to Mac Jones. If you start with Mac Jones, then you can't go to Cam Newton. So that eliminates the whole issue. Um, all right, other cuts. Detroit Lions don't have a kicker. I actually think that Dan Campbell forgot. No, no. Oh, uh, no, I think he forgot. Like, he didn't do the math right. And then maybe in a day or two he will re-sign a kicker when no one's looking. Okay, so I could see that happening if it was like – he didn't do the math right, and he got done with all of his cuts, and there was, like, one guy that he thought would still be on the team. They're like, hey, we're, we're over the limit by one. He's like, oh, shit. Yeah. All right, just get rid of one of these oh. kickers. We can, we can always find somebody that can kick a football. But what I love about this, I absolutely love this about what Dan Campbell's doing. He's, like, accidentally proving, you know what horseshoe theory is in politics, that the far left and the far right are exactly the same? He's doing that with meatheads and analytics people like mm -hmm. he's going to go for two every time without a kicker he's not he's going to go for it on fourth downs a lot without a kicker obviously so he's actually Wait, you like, think he's actually going to start the season with i a hope kicker? that he does i don't think he, i, I think, would i would absolutely love it I if dan campbell i would love it if dan campbell went into the season with zero kickers on his roster i think he forgot i think he did the cut like he probably cut zane gonzalez early in the morning and he was just going down the list and he meant to cut Fat Randy, and then he cut Fat Randy afternoon, and then someone in his office was like, "Hey Dan, we don't have any kickers." And then he was like, "All right, that was a fuck up, my mistake. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna resign someone right now. I'm gonna wait a couple days. That way, it looks like I did this on purpose." Or maybe it's just like you have to earn your kicker instead yeah. of earning that star on the side of your helmet. One you of guys have be on the team. You guys haven't played good enough to justify me keeping a kicker on this roster. Dan Campbell is just breaking analytics. All right, and then the other. Um, every team is – every rookie quarterback is starting except Justin Fields. Oh, Trey Lance isn't. Oh, that's right. Trey, Trey Lance. Trey right. Lance, right. He's, right. Got, he's got a chip in his finger. That's right. Which I guess they're saying that it's just going to be like a week, which I don't think that's possible to come back from like a sheared off bone in your finger. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. We'll have to get pro football Sounds like a this. fake injury to give Jimmy G one last chance. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, Trey, just like pretend that you're, you got a jammed finger. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that, that you're going to sit out for a little bit on this one. But, uh, yeah, Justin Fields, Andy Dalton is going to start. Uh, it's basically the reverse of everything I said about Belichick. Belichick is like, well, what's the best way to win games? Matt Nagy's like, well, I made a promise to Andy Dalton back in March, so I have to keep that promise. You know what would actually be the, the most Matt Nagy move? is if he benched Andy Dalton at halftime for Nick Foles in week one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nick Foles, everyone, no one wants Nick Foles. They've been trying to trade Nick Foles. I mean, the Colts, it would be so They've been trying. funny I know. if the Colts are like, you know what, Carson Wentz might not be ready for week one. Let's get Nick Foles in. He knows uh, the system. Man. Carson and him probably get along really well together. I just, I, I keep going back to, because I, I know everyone's like, well, you don't want to get Justin Fields killed. I don't actually care that Andy Dalton is starting the season in the fact that I think the Bears probably aren't going to be good anyway. So it's not going to be the deciding factor between making the playoffs or not. The part that I hate is that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy had Justin Fields fall into his lap. They re they actually were going to play this entire season with Andy Dalton. Mm -hmm. Like that's the part that's crazy to me. That is the evaluation they did at quarterback. They went out and got Andy Dalton and were like, this is the answer. And then they got lucky. So I don't want to let them off the hook that they got Justin Fields in the draft because he fell to him. I want to remind people that these two morons actually wanted to start Andy Dalton. Nice guy. Really nice guy. Mm -hmm. They actually thought they were going to have Andy Dalton be the starter for an entire year. Big Cat remembers. Yeah. And I think that uh, like Andy, Andy Dalton, he is, like you said, a very nice guy. But, Super nice guy. But the gap between him and Justin Fields is like, it's so astronomical that uh, we're start we're going to start having this conversation pretty soon is the players on the team in order for Matt Nagy to keep credibility with his locker room 
because the player, big cat, gone. big cat, because the players know yeah, who the best position, they do, best player in each position is. Dude, in order to keep credibility and to make it legit, like yeah, this is a football team where if you're the best at your position, you're going to play. They're not going to be able to keep Andy out there, even though he is a very nice guy. Very nice. guy. I don't think that they're going to be able to keep him out there. He bought a house. He bought a house in Chicago. Good for him. So clearly, he's been promised. Probably the next decade as the Bears quarterback. Andy Dalton is too trusting. I, I just no. Why wouldn't you trust Matt Nagy? He's going through with his. He he did a handshake deal. They are starting Andy Dalton. They said QB one. He mm-hmm. is QB one. Like they, you have to trust these guys. These guys come through on every. They let Mike Glennon start. Like they will always. If if, if the Chicago Bears is currently states signs you to a contract in March and says you're the number one quarterback, uh-huh. you are the number one quarterback. No matter what happens, word is bond. Baby. Patrick Mahomes could ask demand a trade to the Bears, and they would still let Andy Dalton start Week One. Word is bond. It's fucking crazy. Uh, the other quarterback news is Deshaun Watson officially appears on the Houston Texans depth chart. Yep, as other. Yeah. So there's safety. There's the starting quarterback, which is Tarod Taylor. Mm-hmm. There's the backup quarterback, which is blank. There's the third string quarterback, which is God knows who I forget. Mm-hmm. And then there's other, which is Deshaun Watson. So he's not even technically listed as being like on the depth chart. He's just like an, he's a, he's a human form of an asterisk is Ooh. what he is. And then David Culley. That's a reminder. If yep. in case you forgot, he's a Thank coach you. of the Houston Texans. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bulldog. They asked him today. Uh, so what's your depth chart going to look like at running back? And he said, I guess we're just going to kind of do running back by committee, which is something that we would say about their running back position after like week four when they're splitting the carries. Mm-hmm. But you've never heard a coach go into the season and be like, I guess we're just going to we're going to throw them all out there. And Fuck it. I guess we're going to play. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're, I guess they're both starters in my book. I appreciate that. Yeah. And he's at least letting us know. He, he actually is causing Matthew Berry to have a little less stress. Yeah. So I, I also think that with David Cully, and the, well, it's not, he's not really making personnel decisions. Uh, Casero, is that the guy's yeah, name? Yeah, Casario. Casario. Uh, pervert down in Houston mm-hmm. what he's doing is he's like he's developed a farm system for the entire rest of the NFL so he's got all these aging veterans on his team that you hear their names and you're like oh that guy used to be good Rex Burkett he's a Texan don't forget that and so like halfway through the season a couple injuries happen on a real football team mm-hmm. and then they're going to be able to trade those guys away over the course of the year and get assets back for them this year they're just they're the Texans general store yeah so if your team needs something go shop down in Houston pick something up it's also uh i mean i don't feel confident that the dolphins aren't going to trade for him Deshaun Watson cuz it seems like there's a lot of smoke around that mm-hmm. and Brian Flores did a like he he did the thing that you never want uh your coach to do and he came out and was like two is our quarterback yeah He's like yeah this is we yeah we, we knew. feel confident we knew that too was your quarterback. we like, feel so confident that we're telling you how confident we feel. yeah like bruce arians isn't like tom brady is our quarterback <laughs> it's not, yeah it's not a big deal mm-hmm. he's he's the quarterback guy stop asking but deshaun watson if you want to get traded to the dolphins and then put a bunch of asterisks in case you go to jail mm-hmm. we'll do that trade where do you think that cam newton is going to wind up I you think honestly, he's going to hang out for a while until there's an injury? I honestly don't know because, like, where, I don't know. So I, the, the most likely landing spot, a lot of people have said, would be the Washington football team, but I don't think that's the no. case at all because they had a, a crack Chance. at him yeah. last year when Ron Rivera was being the new head coach, and they didn't pursue him, so Ron would know more than anybody, right? Yeah. Plus, if you're, like, if, if you're looking at two guys like Cam Newton, Ryan Fitzpatrick, um, they're both probably like I'd, I'd say Fitzy has looked better recently than Cam Newton, dude. But Cam even it's not good. Even if they were equals, like 50 50, you don't go through a preseason with a guy and then at the last second you're like, we're going to bring somebody in who's exactly your level and then get them up to speed in a matter of like a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that he's going to sign with any team like immediately. I don't think that's going to happen. No, Cam Newton's not good. I'm counting it right now. Ready, Francesa? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten games that Cam Newton played last year where he was under 200 yards passing in today's NFL. Mm-hmm. I, that's that's a backup. Yeah. That's a backup. Now, to be fair, the Patriots had, like, dog shit at receiver last sure, year. Sure, but it's still a backup. Yeah, I'm just saying, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, look at Nick Mullins. He'll fucking light the place up. Yeah. C.J. Beathard. 
In the second half. Yeah, yeah, in the second half. Yeah, give him anyone. Yeah, what, what about a quarterback by committee? Why don't a team should just go all in on the Mullen CJ Beathard? Because if you looked at how they played in San Francisco when they were on the same team, sometimes they stunk for a half. But if you if you absolutely fucking nailed it and you had Nick Mullins in for his good half and then Benchum brought CJ in for his good half, you could probably go eleven and six. Yeah. With that combination. Yeah, absolutely. You'd absolutely. have to time it perfectly. Um all right, so those are cuts. Football's about to be back. Uh, we do have Tom Fernelli on the show on Friday to talk a little college football. We're going to do some NFL stuff next week preview. Um, Dude, I, we, I saw the schedule for this weekend in college football. Yeah, it's great. Holy fuck. It's fucking great. Badgers are going to be good this year. And that that's me just probably ready, ready for a fucking you know, sword in my heart on Saturday afternoon. But I actually do think they're going to be very good. Um, the Mets. We should talk about them really quickly. So, Javi Baez, this happened on Sunday uh, when I was heading to the Jake Paul fight, so we didn't record late that night. Javi Baez came out and said that the thumbs down thing that he and Francisco Lindor and other Mets are doing is actually uh, in reply to the fans that boo them when they do something bad. So, when Javi Baez and Francisco Lindor do something good, they give thumbs down to the fans. Okay, weird. You don't usually see players openly saying we're booing the fans. Whatever. Then the Mets came out and made a comment, did an official statement from Sandy Alderson, essentially saying booing is every fan's right. That's Mm -hmm. what they said, which I respect. First Amendment. Yeah, which I respect because it is. And that they completely uh, disavow Javi and Lindor and anyone else who are actively booing the fans with thumbs down celebrations. Okay, so couple things to unpack here. Number one, I love a good boo. Yeah. I don't think that we should be legislating boos in this society. Mm-hmm. Boo is a very productive thing to do. It's a fun thing to do. And at the end of the day, it's just somebody making a noise at you. you- and then it, it may be giving you a thumbs down, but I love a good boo. Boos are underrated. It's way better than if you go overseas and people start whistling at you. Yeah. Hate the whistle. Love the boo. The boo, when um, a crowd catches a good boo, there's nothing like it. When a, when a, maybe an ump makes a mistake or, uh, you know, a ref fucks something up or just something bad happens and then the whole crowd gets a real deep, guttural boo, it's a very great experience. Uh, close to... A whole entire crowd chanting asshole to someone, mm. which is also great. Oh, but I, it's, I love it's, the bullshit chant, too. Yeah, bullshit. Um, at the Jake Paul fight, there was a pussy chant, which mm. happened during the female fight, which is a little awkward, but it was because two guys in the 300 level were standing squared up with each other for, I'm not joking, five minutes without throwing a punch. Don't like that. Yeah, so everyone started chanting that. But back to the Mets. This is just so – it's such a ridiculous – like everyone lost their mind at the same time. And it just, all of it together is the dumbest story ever. So it, it's funny because Sandy tried to come out and say, like, he thought that he was having the fans back yeah. by, by telling Javi Baez, like, hey, this is not what we do. And then there was a backlash to that by the Mets fans who, in their own sick, demented, twisted Mets yeah. brains, were like, fuck you, you should have your players back over us. Right. Even though we're the ones that were booing him. Yes. And now you're saying that you, we don't want you on our side if you were a good... What's his official title with the Mets? I think he's the president of operations, maybe. That's a cool name. Baseball ops. That's a sick name. GM. They they want him to have the players back. They don't yeah. care if, if he has the fans back at all, which I, I actually kind of understand... That line of thinking. You it's know what like, they could have done? It's our right to boo. You don't have to agree with it. You can defend to the death our right to do it. But just let us have our say and you get the players back. They could have just said nothing and it wouldn't have been a big deal. Correct. It really wouldn't have been a big deal. Like, And ha- and the craziest part is Javi Baez is actually not the one that I don't – I don't think Mets fans are actually mad at Javi because Javi is – a, a, a rental. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, he's probably not going to be on the Mets next year. This is all Francisco Lindor. He signed a 10 year, $300 plus million dollar contract. He's Javi Baez's best friend. He's been doing the thumbs down. That's the guy that I think Mets fans are truly mad at. Um, and I really do think, like, Buster Olney was, he was apoplectic. Did I use that correctly? Yeah, that was he good. was apoplectic, being like, Javi Baez has cost himself a ton of money in, in, in free agency. You know what has cost Javi Baez a ton of money in free agency? That he's hitting like 220. Yeah, maybe maybe swinging like a, a full hour ahead of a change. Yeah. That might have done it. So and if he wants to come back to the Cubs on a discount, I would love that because I love him forever. But I would say that if Javi Baez was hitting 350, he could, he could face fuck a guy's wife 
and and someone would sign him in free agency. Whoa. Like after he could walk up to the stands, hit a home run, walk up to the stands, and then like DX thrust into the front row, like into someone's face, mm-hmm. and they would still probably the Dodgers will probably sign him. They might, yeah, they might actually pay him more. Yeah, right. They've got that. Like they've got that cap room coming up pretty soon. I'm, I guess this is a theme today, but I I do think that I always love when um, Big J journalists think that like outside actions. How many times have we seen? Teams, they just don't care about anything but production. Yes. So to pretend that, like, putting your thumbs down or even getting vaccinated really matters, it probably doesn't. If they're good, they're going to play. Right. No, you're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right about that. He's Javi Baez has stunk recently, so yeah. that, that's why it's become a big thing. And then he actually uh, they, got the, he the won fans, the game with a Javi Baez play today. The fans should have just said Brooksy, Adam. Mm-hmm. That would be a much more appropriate yeah, so we way, talk I think, about to release your frustration. And I, before anyone says that, I know that baseball doesn't have a cap. I yeah. know. I know that, but I was trying to make a reference to Trevor Bauer. And the cap going up. Cap goes up. Um, no cap. No cap. There Jake, we go. Jake, God damn it. Love it. Who, uh, who taught you that, should, Jake? Who have you been hanging out with? Okay, let's talk Brooksy. Um, so the PGA came out. They issued a statement that uh, if you say Brooksy on a golf course, you're going to jail. Mm-hmm. And uh, I no, made, you're getting thrown out. You're getting thrown out. Maybe jail. No. So Bryson initially tried to go to the police with this issue. <laughs> right. He tried. Somebody called him by the wrong name, and he dialed nine one one and tried to have people arrested. And they're like, "Hey, uh, Bryson, that's not how laws work." Right. And so, although we do appreciate freedom of speech on this podcast, it is your right to say, Brooksy. The Constitution gives us that right. Correct. Thank you to everyone who fought for that right. Uh, they're going to be kicking you out of golf tournaments this year. Yes, and so uh, I maintain with my initial standing that uh, I don't like Bryson DeChambeau. There is 5% of me that feels bad for him because he clearly can't handle any type of ball busting whatsoever. Every interaction he has is uh, very tough to watch at this point. But I I did turn the corner a little bit on Bryson when he said that he would valiantly donate his vaccine to someone else who needs it badly. Yes. So that's he's saving countless lives by being out there unvaccinated. So thank you, Bryson, for that. But I do – this is – it's become the no horns down ruling, but on golf. And by that I mean – it's singling out one person that gets preferential treatment. <laughs> you can't refer to any. You can't call Tony Finau Xander when he's out yes. there on the course. Uh, but you, or you can. Sorry, they won't throw you out mm-hmm. for calling him by the wrong name. But you can't call Bryson the wrong name, or else you'll get kicked. That to me seems it's weird to make a rule like that specific to one player. It's just uh, the best way to keep this going, which I we can discuss. I mean, I I think that. Uh, we all agree that maybe the joke has run its course. That's that's my thing. I I don't really feel bad for Bryson. I just don't think that the Brooksy thing is as funny as it was when it first started. Because he can't, and especially because he clearly like on the fiftieth time that he can't handle it's like oh yeesh like you know you say when you're in an office setting and maybe you make a joke and then someone flips out you're like oh okay. Uh, sorry. It went too Whoops. far. I, yeah. I don't know. Like, you, bad? You, sorry for taking it the wrong way. Yeah. I apologize to all those who were offended. Right. Uh, I. You know what's just going to happen though? People, if you can't say Brooksy, people are going to find other words to say, and then there'll just be an ever expanding list. Like after Bryson hits a tee shot, can you say? Way to go, steroid boy. Yeah, way because, to go, big guy. Yeah, or like it, soon you won't be allowed to say that either. I don't I don't know what the end game is here for Bryson, but I th- I think the only way that he can overcome this is if he were to get on Dave's bag and caddy for Dave which in the match never against do. us and Brooks Kepka, which is next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. That's really the only way out because it's not going to stop. No one you're Bryson is a big enough douchebag that he will give people a never-ending list of right. reasons to make fun of him. This guy the people that should be in his corner the most are like the people that manufacture his special science fiction clubs from the future that they spend like hours and hours every day in a wind tunnel trying to make a, a driver for him that breaks the laws of physics. And even those people get thrown under the bus right. by Bryson and, and they have to issue a statement and be like, hey, you know that guy that we sponsor? He's a dickhead. The only thing that Bryson does to help his case is when he interacts with other people and it comes across as so bad that I then have my 5%. I feel bad for this guy because you're right. If he were to have any type of sense, he would be part of the match on Tuesday. He'd have fun with it. He can't do that. Mm-hmm. He just There's something that is uh, the wires get crossed and he's not able to participate 
in any type of back and forth. We saw it on the match. He did a canned joke to start, and then he ran out of material, and it was so like my I, I I was physically cringing watching him. So that's where I start to feel bad. It's like this guy can't handle any of this. So. I don't know. I mean, the PGA just fucked him even more, though, by issuing this statement. It's insane. Bryson very clearly went to the PGA and was like, hey, can you guys do something to put a stop to this? Yes, so, like, be all, my shield. Although I do think the joke, like, it's, I don't think it's that funny anymore, not because of how he's reacting. I just feel like it's been, what, like four months, three months? Yeah. Like, I, I would not hate it if people moved on from the whole uh, Brooksy thing. Big guy. F- find something new. Steroid yeah. boy. Yeah. I still Stero- think steroid boy is in play. Steroid boy works. And if he gets mad about that, it's like, well, let's take it to court. And you have to prove that you've never done it. Let's get discovery. Yeah, let's steroid get boy. discovery going. Um, okay. Hot Seat Cool Throne brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Coors Light is the Hot Seat Cool Throne. Summers always feels like the shortest season, but we need to make the most of it. We all just need to chill. As a beer that's made to chill, we want you to savor every second of summer, rediscover, and enjoy what makes summer awesome. So when you need to slow down, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill. It's just it's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. Perfect for a moment to unwind this summer. When you crack open a Coors Light, it feels like the best moment in the summer. We have like one weekend left, two weekends left. I don't know when summer officially ends, but Coors Light is the official beer slowing down summer because as the beer that's made to chill, we want you to savor every second of summer. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right, Hot Seat Cool Throne. Go ahead, Hank. Uh, my Hot Seat is Juju Smith-Schuster. Ooh. Okay. He did the Cray Challenge. Mm-hmm. And Steelers fans are freaking out. Did he Did he win? Did he fall? He didn't fall, but people were just mad at him. Because I feel like Juju Smith-Schuster in Pittsburgh. They're not a good relationship. They're not a good relationship. They were never meant for each other. No. They, don't, they don't understand content. TikTok. Juju Smith is all about the content life. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It, it doesn't feel like it's going well. Um, Although, didn't he just resign? I don't know. I don't know. I'm yeah. pretty sure he signed a, a new contract there, like for a year or something. One year, four million. There it is. So it's going well enough that he wanted to stay there. Wait, one year, four million. Sorry, four year, four million. What? Uh, what? No, that was his starting contract. Yeah, I was sorry. Say, that's, I'll get back that's, to it. Okay, not better to contract. be right than first. Less there, than it uh-huh. there it is. There it is. My other hot seat is Scott Frost. Oh, so it was a little bit why? of a follow up from uh, Monday show, mm-hmm. but he had a press conference after the fact, and he was talking about the offense at Illinois, and he said Illinois. about Illinois. Illinois. Yeah, I like it. Just reading it out. Uh, about half of our game plan was out the window when they lined up how they did. <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah. So yeah. not if you're a head coach and you're on the hot seat, probably not something you want to admit. He got outsmarted by Brett Bielema. Yeah. Well, in Scott Frost's defense, like they didn't tell him that they were going to do it like that. Right. <laughs> so I mean, what what is he supposed to do? Adjust? It, it, yeah. What, like, is he going to play? Was it Uzbekistan? Yeah. But I got Uzbekistan uh, laying fourteen and a half against yeah. Nebraska. You're right going to make you're going to make Scott Frost make an adjustment? That's not part of the deal. They're Nebraska. Do you think that Nebraska being so bad right now is actually hurting Will Compton's chances of yes. getting signed to an NFL yes. roster? I think it has a large part to Definitely. do with it. It's like, where'd you go to college? Oh, oh yeah. Um, yikes. Yeah, is there anyone from Fordham that's available? Yeah, that's tough. Uh, actually, Nebraska has Fordham on their schedule. Oh, I'm aware. So they're going to kill them. I'm aware. Wait, it's, uh, what, they're 40 and a half point favorites? Yep. I'm hammering Fordham. Yep. It's, <laughs> Let's go Rams. Although this might be the only chance Scott Frost has to put up. Because, like, the point differential is important for the end of the season. Yeah. So, so he's got to put up 100. Style points matter. Yes. In Nebraska Fordham. versus Fordham. One year, $8 million deal. That's, okay, there it is. That's so he still, did resign. That's still really cheap. Would he I, he wasn't I, I, would, I would think he'd get year. more. Yeah, but it's... You know, if it's not one thing, it's another with Juju, right? Yeah. But he stopped. He had 97 receptions. He stopped dancing on the shield. Yeah, he was good last year. Um, All right. At your cool throne? A cool throne is Coach Prime. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, hard knocks kind of sucks. Not the most enjoyable Mm -hmm. thing to watch. Coach Prime. We're taping this before. What if someone, like, gets hit by a bus I highly in the doubt middle it. of I with highly, the drone shot highly and, highly and they managed to keep it quiet until it debuted <laughs> with the drone shot. yeah that'd be nice usually there's some type of leaks like tonight's hard knocks to me must watch okay didn't see any okay of that. you're taking a risk i like it so I, I what i haven't seen is what they've shown us in the past on this last episode of hard knocks when they're at the cuts and all that they show like the last edits being made and then like the videotape 
being like sprinted across town by some poor yes. messenger yes. and handed to the HBO yes. executives at the very last second to be like, look at all this hard work we put in for tonight. I haven't seen any of that, so I don't think that there's going to be any surprises. Okay, but Coach on. Prime, it's like a Barcel version of Hard Knocks, Deion Sanders, Jackson State. Uh, is it Jackson State? Jackson mm-hmm. State, yeah. Jackson you got State. it. Whew. Say it with your chest, big man. I, I, I had second guess myself after I said it. It's out now. It started on Sunday. It's coming out every day this week. I think there's six episodes. They're great. It's an inside look. It's like Hard Knocks, Last Chance You combine if you like that type of football Love series. It. It's on the Barstool Sports YouTube. It's better than Hard Knocks, objectively. No bias. Uh, so check it out. Yeah. Okay. And it's edited and filmed by uh, our guy Dana Beers. Dana Beers. Yeah. Zillion Beers. And a whole, it's got a whole crew, a whole, whole so big crew. Yeah. Everything Dana is like Beers is out of focus. It. It's because the cameraman was blowing like a point one two mm-hmm. in perpetuity the mm-hmm. entire time. Well, they have so. they have an actual like real no, production dude, crew they're working with, and it's, they're great. He doesn't drink when he's down in Mississippi. Oh, he doesn't. No, 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 all no, clean totally, living. Totally doesn't. Clean drink. living. Yeah, yeah. You can also see Dana swell up over the course of the series. <laughs> yes. Due to all the good food that he's eating down there. Is that it, Hank? That's it. Good jobs. Um, my hot seat, the Kennedys are on the hot seat. Oh, Kennedys are on the hot seat. Tough break for them because it looks like Sirhan Sirhan, uh, the guy that shot RFK, ah. the assassin so nice they named him twice. He's getting out of prison on parole after like 50 years. And uh, a lot of people are asking questions about, hey, was this guy actually guilty or not? I This is one of my favorite conspiracies because people don't talk about the RFK assassination. Mm-hmm. They talk about the JFK, probably because Ravel always tweets that one out. Yep. Uh, but with the Sirhan Sirhan one, his gun held eight bullets. And there are like 13 shots that you can hear on the audio transcript. No one's ever really talked about that hmm. much. And so he's going to be getting out of prison I, I guess I didn't hope. they was, didn't they like tackle him though as he was shooting him yeah so he the I'm not saying that he didn't do it I'm saying right that did, there did probably any of the was police officers fire there probably was somebody else no okay no no police officers Got fired it. and yeah so I, I'm interested to hear like more maybe you know what we need to have him do like he should be a guest on podcasts. Sir Han, Sir, Sir Han, Sir Han. I would like to hear him on on podcast explain what happened because that's one theory that I think that we don't know the whole story about. There also was a story I saw. Uh, I think the New York Post or someone was like, uh, JFK. One of JFK's mistresses came out and was like, "Yeah, he was. We were uh, together, and then he got married, and he like basically left me high and dry. So I'm canceling him. JFK. Yeah, it's that's fucked uh, up because he got. Wait, it was a second. Uh, he was already married. I'm going first count adultery, second count misogyny. Okay. Canceled. Got it. Uh, all right. My cool throne is I'm going to go with the NFC beast. NFC beast on the cool throne, namely the New York Giants, because Dave Gettleman and all his infinite wisdom, he's keeping two fullbacks. Nice. Not one, but two. He's going to have fullback by committee this year. Nice. Which is a very Dave Gettleman thing to do. You zig when everybody else zags. What does he say about analytics? He's like, we got a bunch of computer guys. Yeah. Like guys with computers that are working on this. Yeah. So I don't know which one of them. The Geek Squad. The, the Geek Squad is working you on it. He just went to Best Buy They're one keeping day. two. It's the, uh, with Saquon Barkley, they've got the Thunder and the Thunder and the Lightning backfield. Mm-hmm. With, with say, is he back in week one? I think so. Dave Gettleman just went to Geek Squad one day and was like, you guys Giants fans? And they're like, yep. And like, okay, great. You want to make some You're money? Part of my team. Yeah, they just installed his big screen TV. Mm-hmm. Yes, that he just watches clear just, and present danger on on repeat. They just got him Yahoo Mail. Yes, that's I, it. I've got one more cool throne. The Irish, the Irish, or they're kind of back. Okay, the Irish their population got over five million for the first time since the potato famine. So shout out to the Irish. Shout out Seamus Fleming. Started it, the potato famine. It only took like two hundred years of never using condoms mm-hmm. for the Irish to get their population. They're back. back. It's also very. It's weird to think that. The entire population was almost wiped out just because potatoes had a tough year. Yeah. And potatoes have, like, no nutritional value. Like, their entire society was subsisting on, like, the least healthy thing until it got wiped out. Mm-hmm. And like, well, we're all out of ideas. Yeah, we kind of had our... I don't know what else we can eat. We kind of had our eggs in that basket. Yeah. What's that? Billy looks like he's got it was, nutrition. It was more the British. It wasn't all the... It was the starvi- starving by the British. And stealing of food. Okay. Okay. Fact. Nice. Nice. Good, good point, Billy. Um, all right. My hot seat is Billy football because uh, Jake Paul fought on Sunday night. He won, and I was there. Um, and I don't think you could beat Jake Paul in a fight. Yeah. You know what? At this point, the train <laughs> may have left the station on that one. Do you know what, though, Billy? There was an article beforehand, which I'd like you to do a little uh, research into. It came out that there was no drug testing for that fight. Hmm. So Jake Paul probably 
Roided up to the gills. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything, but in Caleb's interview, you can see acne right around his, like, oh. like just oh. really bad. Yeah. What, what about his nipples? Very erect. I mean, everyone saw that. Did you yep. give any... What's your nipple analysis of Jake Paul? I mean, anyone can see they were coned. Yep. Con, yeah, super coned. Absolutely coned nipples. So you could fucking... <laughs> no, but... I, I do love Jake Paul, the, the speech that he gave, like, right after he won the fight, in between telling people, like, I haven't been to the dentist in 18 months. Yeah. Like, join the club, Jake Paul. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody's been to the dentist since COVID. Um, by the way, thoughts and prayers of dentists. It must have really been a tough year and a half. It was, for yeah. Um, might, might have sold the lake house mm -hmm. by this point. But, uh, yeah, so with Jake Paul, he's already retiring, which is great. I love that move because then you're it's like a, a band that says that this is going to be their farewell tour. They sell a bunch of tickets for the last one. And then you come. It's a classic boxing move to be like, yeah, I'm going to retire from fighting. And then that way you get a little bit more money in your next fight back. But then after the fight, he was also like going back and forth with the tattoo bet because the bet was already yeah. going to be like Woodley had to get his name tattooed. tattooed. yeah. And then Woodley's like, I'll get your name tattooed if we can rematch. And Jake Paul was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it was very so bad he, negotiating did, on his fault. Did he get part. tricked into I think so. accepting a rematch? I think so. I think so. I mean, it was an electric atmosphere. It was an awesome... Uh, I, it wasn't great boxing. Also, Tommy Fury is the most attractive man in the world and a terrible boxer. That's that's my... I think he'd fuck Jake Paul up. I don't... I, I, don't think so. He fought someone who was like eight inches smaller than him, and he wasn't able to knock him out. The thing is, he's gonna fight Tommy Fury next. And I don't think he will. Out. No, he will. And I think Tommy like, Fury was that. Oh, he bad. fought someone his size, and he's a boxer. Like he's a really good boxer. I was That's the narrative. I was shocked with how good looking Tommy Fury is, and how bad he is at boxing. It's actually like they should trade spaces, and Jake Paul should be a professional boxer, and then Fury should just be a YouTuber. Yeah, that'd be perfect. If you like reality TV, Love Island season five. One Tommy of the best Fury. seasons of all time, yeah. I think Bobby Lang could beat Jake Paul. If they let, if they use rough and rowdy uh, refs, I agree. <laughs> like, if they just let you, you know, do everything you're allowed to do in rough and rowdy. Right, who's the guy from rough and rowdy? The guy that runs it, that just gets Chris, on, Chris, like, Chris. screaming at him? Yeah, go, 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 go. Let him do the playlist yeah. while it's going on, just blasting uh, Lil John on repeat. Speaking of rough and rowdy, my cool throne is me because uh, we had Pac-Man Jones on the show. Uh, afterwards, I, don't, I think you guys weren't as scared, but our uh, great uh, co-worker, Kelly, was like, uh, he wants to kill you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he did. But after the fight, I went into his hotel suite. I walked into there. Uh, they were having a party, and I got my $1,000. I said, Mr. Pac-Man, I would like my $1,000. Mm, good good for you. That must yes. have taken some balls to it go was, there. Um, it was a fun move. What did you spend it on? Uh, I have not spent it yet. Oh. Just put it in my pocket. Didn't charity? Have a chance. Are you going to do charity with it? Probably not going to do charity. Okay. Probably just... I said I'd give him double or nothing if he fought Bobby Lang again. That's smart. Yeah. I would like to see that fight again. It wasn't a bad fight. Like, Pac-Man was really, really fucking quick. Yeah. And which was kind of to be expected given that he is a professional quarterback or cornerback. Yeah. But, like, he was he was a lot faster than I thought it would be. He didn't... He doesn't know the rules of rough and rowdy where anything pretty much goes. Yeah. Bobby kind of ate his lunch when they got in close. Right. Would do some of the dirty stuff on him. Right. Also, Pac-Man, um, they had a party all night uh, after a loss even. And so I texted Pac-Man because we, like, linked up after, got the money. I texted him. He was like, text me a picture of the uh, that we took, me holding the money. I texted him a picture. He hearted it. And then at, I woke up at like 7.30. At 7.05, I don't think he had slept, he had just texted me, ha-ha, fuck you. And I was like, okay, well, back in that. Back in the blender. Love it. So, yeah, shout it's out Pac-Man. Guys talking shit to each yeah. other. What's not to like? Yeah. I, was, I told Billy this yesterday that if he still does harbor the dreams of one day fighting against Jake Paul... He has to like take the upper hand in the relationship in some way, shape, or form. Correct. I think I think that he should kidnap his robot. Uh yeah, I met his robot. I think Cletus would knock out his I, robot. No, but if you kidnapped his robot I, and you're like, hey bitch, I got your I got yeah. your cyborg. Dude. I think that's the only way to get his attention. Cletus in the second round. Can I just say real out. quick, I spent some time with his robot, uh, when he was unroboted. The guy is a fucking mad scientist. He was like he, he was like, yeah, my next thing is I'm going to make these mini cannons and have them fight each other and shoot each other. And he's like, but we don't need them to shoot at a velocity that could kill a person because that's bad for the insurance. And I was like, well, and also because it would kill someone. Yeah. <laughs> and like he had all these ideas. And uh, Dave just, and I were just sitting in this locker room before the fight. We're like, all right, robot, go. Can you go back to being a robot? He just invented battle bots. Yeah. Yes. Which, by the way, I, awesome. I don't hate that. Correct. Battle bots kick ass. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, all right, hot seat, cool throw on Jake. Uh, my hot seat is LeBron. 
Yes. Ooh. LeBron is no longer the most influential player in Cleveland Clav Cavaliers history because oh. they signed Taco Fall today. Oh. So he might steal the spotlight. Yeah. Maybe a witness. That's Taco's. Billboard coming. Yes. Taco Town, baby. I love it. He's very likable guy. Very so. likable. Nothing wrong with that. And then uh, my Cool Thrones, Bill's Mafia. So there's a proposal for a new stadium in 2027. They must put a Wingnuts concession stand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just like, it's a guarantee. We will, we will get an update on the shirts, by the way. I've been meaning to do that. But we will get that. Uh, PSA, if you're trying to order wing nuts, you got to call ahead now. Yes. They're pretty Big much time. on a phone ahead basis. If you come in after five minutes, if they've been open, they're sold out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, take care of Ed and Alicia. Make sure to tip well. Good people. Um, all right, Billy, your hot seat, cool throne. Okay, this one is uh, this one's a big one. My hot seat is ESPN. Yes. And why? There is a very, very intense story. So to start, on Sunday, IMG Academy played on ESPN against a school named Bishop Sycamore. Throughout the game, the ESPN crew started to uh, express much worry about player safety as the school Bishop Sycamore was being blown out 58-0. to uh, It was looking like the Civil War out there. Guys were getting carried off the field. Whoa, Just whoa. Tons now you're stealing valor against yeah. the Civil War. I'm going to do It's a football it. game, Billy. And I'm it was also about slavery, by the way. So are you saying that this football game? That was that was an expression in terms of blowouts. Okay, got it, got it, got it. funny. Like the Civil War. Very funny. Heard it all the time. Ken Burns. Ken Burns, shout out. Anyway, so then people started to look into this school, Bishop Sycamore. Now, Bishop Sycamore sounds like many Catholic powerhouses, Bishop Gorman, that tend to recruit players from out of state and be able to put together you know, great teams that could compete with a team like IMG Academy that has multiple four- to five-star recruits. Because of this, no one really looked into whether Bishop Gorman actually had the recruits and high-class players that they said they did. If you go to their website, it's really just a blog that talks about recruiting on a higher level. Mm -hmm. So what they realized is that their coach uh, at the time, Roy Johnson, had a worn out for his arrest on fraud charges and that many of the players who were not listed on the roster given to ESPN had no names. So they had no idea who's actually playing in the games. So what they found out is that this roster might have been put together of illegal players who were not registered, may have not been the right ages using fake IDs, older players, you know, double, triple PGs, and not actually high school kids. Mm -hmm. Then it gets more. They looked into the registration of the school. The school was a non-state-funded, religiously-affiliated, non-charter school. This is fake. Okay. Is that, is it, at well, what point does it just not even become a school? If you, if there are all those different options yeah. that you can click for your school, yes. Like at some point, it should be like, well, it's, it's not a school. This doesn't no, exist. No, schools. Also, it is. Their, their name is BS. <laughs> Good point. Like, that was the first sign. Oh, also, there's no one ever in the history named Bishop Sycamore. Another there's good never sign. never been a bishop. Yeah, so usually, the whole thing was okay. faked. The kids, I feel bad for the kids. I do, I am always fascinated with, like, a guy who created this, what was going through his head. The fact that he got on ESPN is incredible. But, uh, yeah, it seems kind of shitty for the kids, right? Well, I'm going to be honest. I'm actually going to put this on IMG. Okay. Because IMG is an independent school in the Florida Athletic High School League. So that means that they don't have a, a league schedule, so they have to set up their own games. Right. The thing is with that, as IMG has all these powerhouse players who will injure your team and roll over your team and blow them out, it's very hard for them to find teams to play. Mm -hmm. Right. So if they find this team that's a bunch of scrounged up players you know recruited from already graduated high school kids who like they recruit at these uh, recruiting camps they're going to get them to play them because it's the only people they can get them to play right okay so it's like an Alabama playing an FCS school right by game yeah exactly and they played them the year before and blew them out as well mm -hmm. so it wasn't like they had no idea who this team was got it so ESPN's blaming Paragon Sports, uh, Paragon Marketing, who's supposed to schedule the games that go on the TV. So, you know, there's a lot of blames going around. But the whole story is wild. Yeah. So, so it's like what, a fake team just made it onto ESPN. So what Billy's saying is that essentially, like, you can just create a school if you get enough players. Right. And then make money by selling their games against IMG Academy. 
It, sa- it actually sounds a lot like Firefest. This mm-hmm. whole school sounds like, is Billy McFarland involved in this at all? So from the sounds of it, the, there was former players who came out back when the school was called Christian of Faith. Uh, yeah, which you know, that was, it was, yeah, Christian of Faith Academy. Then they rebranded. Like, as fake of a school name as mm-hmm. you could come up with. Rebranded to uh, Bishop Sycamore to sound more like a Bishop Gorman. Right. Like a powerhouse. Anyway, it falls under the same jurisdiction of school as like an Amish school on like an Amish settlement. They like don't use zippers. Not state affiliated. Right. So like that's how they came into being. So technically, they are a school of sorts, but they're supposed to report their um, attendance to the state. Got it. Okay. Is, One thing I'm, I'm absolutely certain of already is that Bishop Sycamore jokes are going to be made by the least funny people correct. in America for the next 12 months. Correct. They also played two days before. Yeah, which that's yeah. the part where I feel yeah. bad for the kids. That's yeah. very dangerous. Turns out the kids said that they're, they... They're all adults. Well, not Some all of them, them are kids. Yeah. It's like not a, all of them. There are kids involved. So back in 2018, a player who... The roster's not all kids. Not all... There's some uh, guys who are like, I think, graduated high school, right? Yeah, like double PGs, not right. just regular PGs. But there, then, but there are kids too, right? There's yeah. 16, 17-year-olds. There was an interview with a guy in, uh, in Complex today who played at Bishop Sycamore for I think the 2018 to 2019 season when he was 15 and they basically said like yeah we've got the state of the art facility they brought the kids up there said that they were going to be like on Netflix and everything like a last chance yeah, yeah, yeah. type situation yeah. and it turned into them just having to live in a hotel Jesus. for like 5 months so it's definitely it's definitely run by somebody who is like probably the coach who then fired did he fire himself no the founder fired him but He's claiming the founder, might be the, the, coach. the founder definitely has his hands clean and all yeah. this. He's like, wait, this is, Mike is, Richards this, situation. Is, this is not what Bishop Sycamore stands his for. His name is Andre. The oh, founder. Okay. Something. So that's different than Roy Johnson. Right. Who has an arrest warrant. Okay. Got it. And by the way, uh, Mike Richards also yeah, he, got yeah, fired, get fired from, I think, did he also fire himself from I think being so. executive producer? I think so. So, yeah. Got another one. No one bites the dust, right? Yeah, tough. Yeah. Um, all right. Good hot seat. Crazy story. Insane story. Like, I don't know how they get up on ESPN, but... It was very funny to see the announcers in real time just, like, like, start to turn against the broadcast. Yeah, Yeah. like, we should... Because they didn't even give a real roster. Uh Uh-huh. They just handed them a piece of paper with, like, names on it. Nothing else. No names? Yeah. Um, All right, you're cool, Thorne. Urban Wildlife, uh, they found an 80-pound cougar in the Bronx yesterday. So, reminiscent of the tiger story. The guy who had a tiger and a crocodile in his apartment. Remember mm-hmm. Tiger King? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the cougar. What's it, How big is a cougar? Uh, about the size of a puma. Okay. Oh, Which okay. is about the size of a mountain lion. Of, uh, exactly. Yeah, okay. Got it. Got it. How many tor- turtles stacked on top of each other? Uh, 16. Okay. What, do cur- what, do, what would a cougar eat in, like, an urban environment? Rats. Mm. They should release more cougars onto the street. It was mm-hmm. being kept as a pet. That's what they call Got Fleet it. Week, guys. Got it. Got it. Um, all right. Uh, should we get to our interview? We have Jerry O'Connell. Awesome interview in person. Jerry O'Connell's the best. Uh, before we do that, PFT, you got a quick word from our sponsor? Yeah, HelloFresh. Love HelloFresh. They're the absolute best. Uh, with HelloFresh, you can get pre measured ingredients you can get fresh ingredients you can get mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door if you're out there and you're wondering how do i simplify my life there's a very very easy way to do it. that's using hello fresh a lot of us are on diets right now maybe you're coming down from a summer where you've had a little bit too much to drink not feeling at your healthiest if you're looking for an easy way to get back into shape to get healthy and an affordable way you got to look to HelloFresh. It's America's number one meal kit. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, but if you go back to your apartments and you walk through the lobby or wherever they keep the packages that have been sent to people in your apartment, Mm -hmm. when I walk past a HelloFresh box, I get very jealous because I know that that person's going to have a tasty meal and it's going to be an easy meal to cook. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips with less prep, less effort. It's got minimal cleanup too. That's a big one. So you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes got calorie smart options so it's easy to enjoy tasty locale meals this summer without scouring the grocery store for ingredients and the web for easy recipes you can choose from 50 menu and market items each week from vegetarian meals to craft burgers extra special gourmet options these are all available there's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed tested by professional chefs chefs and nutritional experts they can get the the produce from the farm to your door in less than a week that means you get fresh, high-quality ingredients 
We love HelloFresh on this podcast. We have a special deal for you guys. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash PMT14. That's promo code PMT14 to get up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's a crazy deal. Go to HelloFresh.com slash PMT14. Use promo code PMT14 to get up to 14 free meals. We love HelloFresh. They are America's number one meal kit. Now here he is, Jerry O'Connell. Okay, we now welcome on one of our favorite guests, recurring guest in studio. I think we're the only show that does their fantasy football preview like this, and it's I think this is the third or fourth year in a row. It is Jerry O'Connell, our it, favorite. It is so exciting to be back here. I mean, I, I don't even know what to tell you guys. I, um, I, I you know, ever since I was on your show. Um, uh, those who might not recall, last year I talked about, uh, it was around this time exactly last year, and I was talking about draft strategies. And uh, I said I have a lot of like um, ticks and OCDs when it comes to my teams, and I have to have uh, a few Browns on my teams yep. because the last time I won, uh, Braylon Edwards and Derek Anderson were on my team. <laughs> I have to have a few Jags on my teams because last time I won, Maurice Jones-Drew was my running back. Yep. And I have very weird ticks, but... Um, this year I made a very long list as to why I can or can't draft uh, players from teams and positions and oh, such. Oh, okay. Well, let's, start, let's get to that list. Wait, wait. Yeah. You're, so you're trying to change yourself. Well, it's not that I'm trying to change myself. It's just that, um, um, commenter, it's like when you're <laughs> in a relationship, okay, and it's not working out, you uh -huh. know, and you just try and you keep trying and you keep trying to make the relationship work out, yeah. and it's not working out. Um, enough is enough. It's big it's a, that yeah. you're trying to demonstrate growth. That you yeah. th that you're self reflecting No, scouting it's not, yourself. It's not growth. It's time to move on. Blow the whole thing up. It's time to move on. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes relationships work out, mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't. You're like hiring a whole new GM in front office. I you love know, this. I, you know, I was making more of a relationship analogy. Sometimes it's just time to call the lawyer and say, "Uh huh." It's I yeah. want out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how get how do I do this? Deal. Get so, me the um, house. So let's start with the Browns. Yeah. Wait, wait. Before we do that, what are you doing these days? Let's um, plug something. Uh, I'm on a show called uh, The Talk. It's a uh, it's a um, talk show on CBS. It's Love on it. um, weekdays at 2 p.m. on CBS. Um, I'm the first male uh, host on the panel. It's uh, it's it's groundbreaking. Yeah, I'm, breaking barrier. The Jackie <laughs> Robinson. Go. Finally, we I'm have breaking the, TV. I'm breaking the not the glass ceiling. I'm breaking the yeah. Finally, I'm like, breaking the plexi floor. The, my two year old son can look at the TV and be like, "Look, as, as a white man, I can someday make it to TV." That's exactly. Jerry <laughs> that's that's what's happening there. You know, I um. So it's really fun. I have a fun time doing it. It's awesome. A, it's a good show. I start officially. In oh, you two haven't weeks. even started. I haven't even started. So you haven't even broken the ground. Um, I you're uh, standing with the shovel and the hard hat. I ready filled to in do for a, I filled in for a month. I was um, I was abjectly unemployed all through um the pandemic. I'm sorry, I got really quiet in here. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, but uh, wait, are you just making up a show to plug so that you don't seem like a loser? Yeah, you're you're like, no, I'm going to be on TV every day on CBS <laughs> Network. No, it's a real every television home. show. It's just it's not your <laughs> yeah. demographic. You know, it's Whoa. a daytime. No, but you're a friend, so we will support it, and right. we will get everyone to support. Milfs it. love us. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's uh, it would be great maybe to have you guys on as like great. a done. Uh, I, I don't know, like a, a grit. We could do like um a grit week thing. By the way, thank you for closing out grit week with me. This is the end of yes. grit week. Yeah, right? yeah. This yeah. is the official thank end you. of grit Absolutely. week. Yes. You guys are the best. Wait, so wait, wait, are you moving to New York? Uh, no, it shoots in Los Angeles. Ah, I thought we were gonna get a best friend moving into the neighborhood. Um, no, but I'm back often. I uh, okay. I'm, they I'm always back say often. that. You always mm. say that. <laughs> yeah. So Jerry, I, I think you might be pulling a double psych on yourself or double cross. Excuse me, double mm -hmm. cross on yourself because this is the year you've decided to blow everything up. You're deciding to change your draft strategy, yeah. and this is the year. Literally, everybody is saying that the Browns have the most talented roster in the I, NFL. <laughs> I understand that. And listen, you're going to find out with a lot of my ticks, that's where I go wrong, is that I quit them right before they – it's like it's like breaking up with someone just before they – uh, Hit just, the lottery. Are, are you no, okay? no, 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 no. Yeah. Are you okay? Are you like, going through like a... Let's like, let's like be realistic. Is Rebecca like, doing okay? No, everything's fine with our marriage. We did it. We made it through the pandemic. It was... I didn't think we were going to make it, but we did. Like, <laughs> I have to be honest with you. My And it's not just me. It's my wife and I looked at each other like week three when it was like, oh, this isn't going to be two weeks. <laughs> week three, 
and we had like blasted through Love Island or whatever. Tiger King. Tiger yeah. King. And like we realized we weren't designed to be together all the time. <laughs> And this is going to be really different. But we made it through. I'm not going to say we made it through stronger. I know people say we made it through stronger. Mm-hmm. Weaker. You made it through weaker. But we actually, we're a little, we're a touch weaker. Not a lot weaker. Uh-huh. We made it through a touch weaker, but we are still, we did it. Yeah. Congratulations. congratulations. You sound really happy. Um, we do have two 12-year-old daughters who just got phones. So oh, that, no. But that occupied them all the time. So it was great. They Credit were just you for holding out that long. We did. We held out. That uh, 12 feels like it's, I, f- I feel like kids get phones at like seven now. You know what's funny? You have about a decade before you have to deal with this, um, Kat, but um, uh, all of their, fr- it's so funny. I grew up um, uh, with, I went to a girl's house. I grew up actually in this neighborhood, believe it or not. I went to junior high about five blocks from here. And um, I went to a girl's house uh, at the Chelsea Hotel. You know that hotel that yeah, they're yeah. redoing on 23rd? And she was kind of an art- arty kid. And I recall walking through her apartment and she didn't have a TV. And I said, where's your TV? And she went, oh, we don't have one. And I was like, what? And my kids at 12 not having phones were like that kid without a TV. Right. It was like, it's a part of their social life. But now they have the phone, so they were nose deep in the phone the entire pandemic. Like TikTok, if you're a parent and you don't want to deal with your children, TikTok. TikTok is like, just scroll. It's, the best. it's just so addictive. They just do it all the time. It's so awesome. Yeah. They're just gone. Just just scroll, scroll, We're scroll. on TikTok. Well, our strategy with TikTok is Billy, who's not here right now. Sure, Billy. I do have a question about Billy. Yeah, go ahead. Um, because I do, I, I, I really, I'm not kidding. Like, the thing I respect most are, are veterans, are people who... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm I'm actually I want to be serious on yeah, your show yeah, for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. I really like going away from your family, mm-hmm. serving your country, mm-hmm. risking your life. It's it's more than a job. It's, it's not a job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not joking. I'm being serious here. It's really it's putting not only your life, it's putting everything on the line mm-hmm. for everything that we hold true and dear. So we can play fantasy football. So we can play fantasy football. I'm really grateful. I'm really one of those people who I, I don't care. I, I don't care how many times everyone said it. Thank you for your service. Yes, thank you. Um, Billy. If, uh, if thank you is almost not enough. If by yeah. the grace of something I'm given a business class seat and I see anyone in close to anything that's camouflage, mm-hmm. green, anything, I'm saying you know uh, this is yours. Um, Smart. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, he's special. Is, he's a special guy. Is Billy a veteran? Uh, of the war on Christmas. Yeah. Yes. So he is not a veteran. No. I have um, a big problem with this guy. Well, Do you know? hold on. He's not a veteran per se, but I think you could say, like, Billy would have made a great Navy SEAL. No, So is no. it really a... a no, like, That's kind of a technicality but that he wasn't actually a Navy SEAL. He also said that he would trade it all to become a Navy SEAL. This is actually when he didn't even have a job here. He said he traded all, which was trading nothing to be a Navy SEAL. So he's, yeah. Commenter, you cannot tie army issue shoes to your backpack and walk through the streets <laughs> like you just got off of a plane leaving Kabul. I know. And you just I served. Know. It's not okay. It's like those freak shows that drive fake police cars down the yes. street. Mm-hmm. They are freaks, man. Yes. They are a danger. They are a menace to society the, and they're actually dangerous the because victorious. you slow down. Yes. Yeah. yes. The crown it, vicks with the with the big uh, mirror on the side. They make believe they are officers of the law to make people respect them. It is really messed up it's actually a mental problem yeah i think so billy no i agree the thing with billy is he's he's not doing it intentionally he's just over the years accumulated so many things that are military adjacent because i think sub- subconsciously he wants to be in the military right so you play enough that, call of duty you end up in the military is that really stolen valor yeah it's it's not stolen valor. It's actually a mental issue. <laughs> yes, not, I agree. I stolen agree. valor is saying I did this. This uh-huh. is my medal. I did that. I accomplished that. He's actually he's got. I'm not joking. He needs like he needs to go to betterhealth.com yes. slash pmt yes. and type some of this stuff in. Uh huh. Yes. He needs yes. to talk to somebody yes. for sure. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, I, I wish that Billy was around to hear that. I think he needs to hear it from somebody face to face. Yeah, he's on a mission right now. Um, can I talk about why I've broken up with the Browns? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. So let's do your fantasy football uh, <clears throat> rules or wh- whatever you prepared for. So I used to always have at a minimum two Browns on my teams. Mm-hmm. And then last season against the Raiders, I know it was a hailstorm, but the Browns scored, I believe, three points in a game. 
Yes. And a grapple. It was a yes. grapple storm. Yeah. A yeah. whatle storm? Grapple, grapple. I learned that word last year. So grapple is a mixture of like hail, sleet, and snow and rain a little bit. And they have a special word for it. It's like a German Midwestern word called grapple. Um, I don't care. Like, <laughs> you can't. I can't. I've been with you for over a decade. Uh-huh. You can't score three points in a game. You right. can't do that to me. I We watch that game here because we fire up. That's what you really need to do. You need to come with us on a Sunday. Come here. We have all the to. games on. We sit for seven hours and watch all the games. But I think we all had the over because it went down to, like, 33 or something. We're like, how could we not? And then they just never scored. Um, it was very upsetting. So I actually... Um, I broke up with the Browns. I will no longer That's be it. drafting Browns. That was it. That's that it. was them stepping out on your marriage. I may, in a defensive player, uh, pick up Miles. Um, Wait, you have a Miles league Garrett. with defensive players? Yes, they're so. I'm in a league. <laughs> it's a freak show. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I got to tell you, you're I'm, the freak show. I'm in a league with complete nerds who know nothing about football. Nothing about football. And I entered this league thinking I'm going to win this every year. This is easy. I mean. I guess we're allowed to talk about gambling on the show. Yeah. Um, that's all you talk about. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I thought this is easy money. Right. And last season I came in last place. Oh, oh, no. And I had to pay the penalty for last place. What was that? It was $200. Wow. It doesn't matter. I can afford the $200 because, you know, I mean, I'm on you the You got a real yeah, job yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I resell, like, Stand all this bar me. stool stuff, the bag, the goodies bag that you yeah. give me on what are the resi- What are the residuals on Stand By Me? Um... Uh, I mean, they're not, they're not, a, a, I don't think you can make a living from it, but uh, it's, I mean, they still come in. You, you get know? a check every every quarter? It used to be paper checks. Everything's gone pretty much wireless these Got days, it. you know, for the environment. And That's got to be kind of a bummer, though, because I would imagine that walking to your mailbox, collecting a check for something that you did 40 years ago has got to feel pretty good. Yeah, um, I think uh, the actual act of, like, going through them, like, when I go to my mailbox, I'm like, wow, are we still doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. That's what I feel like it's, uh, and when I go to the post office, you know, shout out to all USPS workers, love them, working Mm -hmm. hard, Uh, saw your dude coming up here um, and dropping off packages and everything, Um, but it does seem like, uh, wow, are we still doing that? Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, I agree. um, Like going into a post office is not, you know, there is a very nice post office here um, in in Midtown Midtown Manhattan, but... Uh The post office where I live, I love everyone who works there. It's like it keeps moving from like strip mall to strip mall. It's next to a massage parlor now. It's mm-hmm. like yeah. really, uh, it gets shady they in the post office. They should serve beer in, in post offices. Yeah. They should just put a bar in. Or deli meat. Both, you're taking yeah. a num- like If you take a number, you might as well get some deli meat out of it. Yeah, I think um, financially they're having a lot of problems, po- the postal service, so mm-hmm. I'm not sure they can... Get it's not like free, an Ikea. They can't get away with like giving salami. away meatballs or something. Yeah. Get John Taffer involved and have it be a crossover event, a post office and a bar restaurant at the same time. Yeah, but he would only feed you late at night. Call it the mail room, yeah. M-A-L-E. Yes. Oh, I like yes. that. And it's yes. a gay bar. Yeah. Um, I do want to say, uh, as you know, I'm a huge listener of your show. Uh, I got to give a shout out to a restaurant in my area, the Six Chow House. When they serve wings, you can request only drumettes, which is what I'm Ooh, a fan of. Okay, wow. not a flats guy, huh? So you just uh, go, t- you go like a dozen drumettes. I go straight drumettes. Wow. Straight all drumettes. I say all drumettes, please. What are what are what's the difference between a drum and a drumette? Is um, it a female male thing? Drum is the leg. A drumette is the wing. It, got it's it. the leg looking part of the yeah. wing. Yeah, got it. So uh, I'm a, I'm a huge Dramet fan, but I did get very hungry for wings listening to your show yeah, the last couple of They were sure, incredible. You, if you ever go to Buffalo, which I, I know. a man of your stature I don't think ever goes to Buffalo. And uh, no, I do. I've been to Buffalo. Uh, listen, I'm I'm all about the Lehigh Valley up there. I love uh okay. I love um I I was in Buffalo uh a couple days ago. How about that? What? Yeah. Shocker, no. right? I swear to you. What were you doing? You're lying. Were you I hanging was, out with Benny the Butcher? Uh no. Um I um <laughs> with the labradoodle um i um no i was working in toronto and i flew out of buffalo ah okay so you got to go to wing nuts uh i didn't i went straight to the airport but next time i will go you to wing go nuts. say yeah. hi to ed yeah. i've been thinking about it for the last week i know it's you guys I really want. painted a picture all i, I really want. Did. i'm i'm thinking about it right now i want to move to buffalo across the street mm-hmm. all right so let's do some fantasy football okay i also um i told you i i had to always have a jag on my team ever since i won with maurice jones drew the Jags are also, I've broken up with them. They're dead to me. Good. That's smart. probably a smart move. Until Trevor Lawrence gets, like, you know, settled in, I think you want to avoid them. Um, last season, um, you know, I, I don't know about you guys um, in varying degrees of relationships and, stu- and, and such, but 
I can't watch Thursday NFL, Sunday morning NFL, Sunday afternoon NFL in the morning. That's what we have in Los Angeles. Um, uh, and and then Monday NFL. I have to pick. I get two of those. Um, no, yeah, that's not I, I, I get two of them. Job. So Thursday night's games are typically not the most exciting They're games. skippable for you? Color so, rush, though. Yeah. The, the uniforms are slightly different. Oh, really? Yeah, on Thursdays. Oh, you don't even know. Um, yeah, I know, but I need, uh, like, I'm only given two slots a weekend, right. and I can't waste it on, you know, yeah, you gotta no use offense it on to Sunday. these teams. I, I, yeah. I can't waste it on a Titans-Bengals yeah. Yeah, matchup. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, uh, so last season, I plugged in DJ Shark, mm -hmm. who uh, uh, great great receiver. I believe this was week two. They the the Jags played Thursday night, and I was feeling pretty confident. He's a wide receiver one ish. Like yeah, he's up there. Yes. Um, and um, he was a game time scratch. I was not watching the game. I was oh. uh, I was at dinner with my wife. Oh. And I came back, and there was a zero there when I checked my phone. I try not to check my phone during during uh, dinner. Um. And um, I was, I really took it out on my children for the next <laughs> four weeks. I mean, yeah. I was a different person. It really changed me. And yeah. I remember looking at the television and seeing, you know, DJ Shark on the sidelines. He did suit up. He just didn't go in the game. And um, I remember think I like was looking at the TV and I was like, that's it, Jags. I'm never again. I'm done with you. Yeah, they do play. Yeah, they play a lot of Thursday games. You yeah. should just, you should make one of your daughters the general manager, like the, the acting general manager. So you can go out to dinners, you can do all that stuff. And meanwhile, she's making sure that mm -hmm. you're not missing any open spots in your game. I, I, I should. I, um, I don't trust anyone. I don't like partners in my leagues. I don't, <laughs> I don't send that email or that link to be like, hey, let's be a co-manager. I, I don't do that. It's my, it's my thing. It's, right. Um, yeah. right. Also, some of my um, team names like at work are like a little offensive, so right. I don't want that ever getting out. Right. You what know? are we going right. with this year? Um, 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 Fizikiel Elliott. How about that one? Mm -hmm. Fizikiel Elliott. I, I really like that. Um, it's mostly Thanks. like work jokes where I work. It's like uh, I'm at uh, like I make fun of people who have um, uh, been let go, gotten in trouble, right. and stuff uh -huh. like right, that. Right. I don't want to mention it because I'm sure they'll listen to right. this and mm -hmm. stuff. Right, right. And then right. I'm typically asked by a superior to change my name, and it becomes <laughs> like a funny thing because I blast it out on an email and right it's funny. Uh -huh. okay i but love nothing it. like highly offensive no no, no it's just uh, more inside jokes inside jokes stuff. yes yeah. yes all right so let's do your your fantasy rules okay um i uh i will not be um how many rules did you write no i wrote a lot i have highlights and yeah. everything this okay. is all like right. uh this Very is like prepared. a coach daily all right. uh, yeah yeah this uh, is huge clipboard um, i'll put this in the hall of fame someday uh, i'm no longer drafting um any giants wide receivers i am from the new york area i like to watch giants games um I won't be uh, after uh, Darius Slayton, who I started last season in week one, um, had two touchdowns in that first game, if you recall. And then for the rest of the season, he only had one touchdown. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And the Giants receivers are dead to me. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's all it takes. Yeah. That's fair. So not not a believer in Daniel Jones. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just not touching their receivers, so I don't even care. Like, it's like, I got to tell you, it's like relationships, commenter. It's like... You have to, if you break up with somebody, it's like, I don't care what you do. Seriously, I'm not going to check you okay, your Instagram. Are you, yeah. are you, I'm fine. All right? Yeah. I'm fine. It's yeah. just I get very, like, this is an exciting time of year for right. me. No, I've you, done a number excited. of mock drafts. I actually had to bite the bullet and join a fantasy guidance uh, site mm -hmm. uh, where they I've been doing hundreds of mock drafts. A day. <laughs> You're like the biggest mark ever for a fantasy, for like a, a person who makes their living coaching other people's fantasy teams. You're like the white whale. They're like, I, I landed Jerry O'Connor. I have joined a number of those fantasy sites. You know, when I came in last, I'm really upset because I came in last place last yeah, that's, year. Yeah, that's really upset me. And it's people who know nothing about, like nothing well, about football. And I'd say the, the, the embarrassing part, if I may, uh, not to like really rub salt in this wound, but... You came in last and you tried because usually the no, last place. I tried place, my hardest. Yeah, right. The last place guy usually is like, oh, he just didn't pay attention, or for he leaves slots open. Yeah, right. And it just, it really, it's. I, I got to tell you, it really. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually. I made a betterhealth.com backslash PMT joke earlier, but. Like, I obsessed over it all year long. Yeah. yeah. No, I can tell. It's That'll stay up. with you. So we're going to do it this year. All right, so no Giants. Uh, no Giants receivers. Yeah. Everyone else. These are specific. Um, the Jets. 
Um, I'm from the New York area. I like to watch Jets games. Um, I said on your podcast that I um, I like to draft Jets. Um, last season, with my third round pick, I picked Levian, who played. <laughs> yep. I counted. Uh, he played three quarters. <laughs> All season long, he played three quarters. Honestly, I've totally he didn't forgotten. Play three that games. was your third guy. Co- yeah, for a second, games. I was like, "Wait, oh yeah, he was on the Jets. Like, he, he, he was really good for a long time." So then he went to the Chiefs, and I was like, "Oh, here we go. Yep. Yeah, now I got you guys. I'm going to be like the Yankees. Yeah, I'm going to come in the, in the home stretch. Here, here I come. By the way, at this point, I'm not playing to win. I'm playing to not be in last. Right. And I was getting excited about it. It last season really messed me up. Mm-hmm. Um. So I will never be drafting Jets again. Although I may draft uh, Corey Davis and I may draft that guy Carter. Uh, just okay. Because. So no Jets except for two Jets. <laughs> no Jets, but they're going to be on my bench. Okay. Um, uh, this is just a personal thing. I don't draft any Steelers. I'm sorry to tell you guys. Okay. Um, I didn't like uh, when Rudolph, that quarterback. I thought he egged on um, Miles, Miles Garrett. Garrett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had it coming. I, yeah. I thought that uh, like everyone was like. Um, Saying, "Oh gosh, how could Miles Garrett do that?" But no one talked about what Rudolph's face. Yeah. We have, so we have a theory on this show. His face. He's got too big of a face. It's like very. You see his face, and you're like, "I don't like it. I don't very, know what's wrong with it." But very I don't like punchable. It. He's got yeah. like the the Kool Aid lips too. Big. It looks like he's got like a red ring he's got around a big him all ass the time. Head. Just kind of want to punch him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't want any smoke with anyone. But like you guys are obviously creating. But um, I'm. Uh, I, I just thought he. I, yeah. I, I, I can't deal okay. with the Steelers. So no Steelers. That way. Can Got I give it. you just a real quick piece of advice? Yeah. I know this goes against your no Steelers rule, but okay. if you're playing in a, a league with defenses, a, a good rule of thumb is just like draft a Steelers defender because right. they're usually not bad. Right. They will usually end up being um, like worst case scenario average. For I, I do have like OC. Oh, oh, I told you I suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder, especially with fantasy football. Um. Betterhelp.com backslash PMT, but um, I uh, I have to have the Baltimore. I have to have the Ravens defense on my to. teams. So like, and no you matter might, where they draft are, them first round if you have. To. No, I won't draft them first round. But when I see the Rams going, or um, what are some other defenses like out there? Seahawks, the Steelers. Fox, um, yeah. Um, I. That's when I um you I might it. not take a uh, Corey Davis or uh, you gotta have the Ravens or a uh, Michael Carter. I might yeah, take a I'm Ravens defense. Kind of the same way about the Seahawks. I, I just assume that the Seahawks defense is always going to yeah. be good because mm-hmm. the Legion of Boom. Remember that? Sure, mm-hmm. of course. Sure, sure, sure. Um, Suggs, uh, Lewis, uh, Ladarius. C- come on, um, Ed Reed. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bears. I gotta get to the Bears. I'm Ooh. so sorry, Cat. Um, uh oh. Uh, I think 2017, I I drafted maybe with my first round pick a running back named uh, um, Jordan Howard. Yeah. Um, only to watch another running back, Tariq Cohen, get uh-huh. pretty much every red zone pass from six seven Mike Lennon, um, yep. uh, 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 Mitchell. Yeah, uh, Mitch and, was there. Uh, yeah. The uh, the MVP. That was um, a very bad Bears offensive season. Yeah. Um and. Um, it's just so painful when you waste a first round pick and then Oh, you took him in the first round, Jordan I, Howard. I believe he was uh, he was up there. He okay. was up first or second. Yeah. He was He's he not was, on the team anymore though. Hasn't I, been. I understand he's not on the team, but I can't look at the Bears. Okay. I can't look at their running game at all. I, you know what? I'm not going to fight you on that because I've watched too many uh, Bears games where the offense is just putrid, so I agree with you. Another running game I can't look at uh, Vikings running game, and I know that's what? like crazy because they have Dalvin superstars yeah. on on that team. I just um uh, um I, I don't believe in uh, I didn't know what switching your children was mm-hmm. um until I heard a running back from that team talk about um you know oh, punishing Peterson children has, yes yes yeah. so that's switches, they're off for that and it just it it, rub, it really I, I like it really shook me it right, shook me right and I can't fair. look at any so of their man's what, have what about uh, what about the Chiefs. Um, Chiefs are okay. Um, you got a sliding scale of Chiefs are okay. You can yeah. draft any Chiefs. Got it. You but can, they Tyre- got they got. Tyre- oh, you're talking Hill? about Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can draft any any Chief that you want. I'm okay, I'm okay so sliding with the scale. That's okay. Uh, I'm okay. Of man. I'm okay with all Cowboys. What about okay. What about Panthers wide receivers? Uh, I'm okay with all Panthers. Wow. So again, all Panthers a, a sliding scale. On yes. That. Sliding uh, I would scale. never draft a Panthers quarterback because last season. Um, when I came in last place, uh, the opposing team I was uh, the 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 team I was up against for last place uh, was playing against someone who did not play a quarterback because it's a it's a two QB league, so you can only have two QBs. He stashed Bridgewater. Oh, and I was like, you gotta 
you got to like dump Bridgewater and pick up a quarterback. And he was like, this is collusion. You can't talk to me. I'm not even playing you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need you to win this game. And he wrote back, I'm stashing Bridgewater. So my name in that league is stashing Bridgewater. Oh. Um, so I, I, I will have nothing to do with any Panther, Panther quarterback, quarterback or Arnold. now any Broncos quarterback. What about okay. Patriots tight ends? Uh, Patriots tight ends are fine. I will never touch Patriots wide receivers. No one knows who they're, who, I mean, who do you draft? I will say, uh, Patriots running backs, I am okay with, especially now that there's uh, more of a clear, uh, yeah, so leader, Damian Harris. Rams, yeah. Um, but, uh, last season, um, I, uh, it was a bye week and I was in desperate need for a running back. And, uh, it w- this was not collusion. I talked to someone else in the league who was in desperate need for a wide receiver and I, for a one-week swap, gave him Nelson Aguilar for um, what? for Rex Burkett. It's not collusion. That, that is, is collusion. collusion. No, it's a one-week swap. That's the what definition are you of collusion. About? It's a one-week swap. It was an even Steven swap. He needed a wide receiver. I got Rex Burk. I got Rex Burkett, who had two touchdowns it, in that game. Was it a handshake deal, or it was there? Let me ask there you this. No yeah, there so was no paper trail. There were no emails. That's how I know it's collusion. Yeah. Is because you went out of your way to not leave a paper trail. Did you feel a little dirty? You knew it was wrong. No, not in the slightest. Okay. I looked and saw. Who needed a wide receiver? Uh-huh. And I said, "You have Rex Burkhead sitting on your bench. Hey, how about Nelson Aguilar for a week? And I get Rex Burkhead. Ha ha! <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> and then next thing I know, I got a request and I hit confirm. Oh. And then the week after, uh-huh. I sent him the request back, and it was fine. You're- What's the big deal, <laughs> guys? Relax, slow down. <laughs> Summer, Coors Light, guys. Come on." <laughs> Take a chill pill. Let me ask you this: How many uh, how many leagues are you in right now? I'm in five leagues. Oh my okay. god! Are you looking for another? Because we have a we have a fantasy oh. football league that we're in. This is our second year in a row uh, with CJ McConnell. Okay. McCollum. Sure. CJ, sorry, CJ McCollum. Okay. Uh, and I'm Julie, in. Julius I will do it. Okay, all right, yeah, I will do it. Say, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. You don't have to go through the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, there's Julius Randall. And there's Great. Turtle from Entourage. Exciting, yeah, sure. It. Jerry Jer- Jerry Ferreira. Jerry yeah. Ferreira, yeah. So yeah. we have a team. Would you like to manage our team for us? Maybe even draft. It's a now. It's a high roller buy-in. It's a thousand dollar buy-in. Holy we've, sh- yeah. we've, shit! We've got that covered. We got it covered. So you just have to be our general manager. Do I have to do something for that money? Are you guys no, going to no, make no, me no. transport Not something no, no. or we'll something? We'll count this. We'll count this. This is your. This is your. Uh, you know your payment by just, appearing on our show. Just don't lose. Yeah. Uh, I'm in. All I'll right, do it. perfect. Yeah. Love it. Done. Love it. Last. So um, the just know there'll be no Wednesday. fucking Browns or Jags on okay, this yeah, team. Yeah. Just I understand want, that. I want or you Jets, to be you, except for two, um, <laughs> or Bears or no, Steelers. No Cardinals running backs uh, either, because <laughs> last season I lost to Kenyon Drake, uh, an opposing team. He had two touchdowns in a game. Who like I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no Houston uh, Texans. Running backs, because in 2016 I drafted Lamar Miller, and that didn't go too well. I believe okay. I drafted him in the first or second round as well. And every season, like with the 15th round, Jerry takes Duke Johnson Jr. It's a nightmare. Um, I, I can't wait till when this airs. We're going to air it next week. But when this airs and uh, someone, some AWL has the time to put this all together, that you basically are drafting from a pool of like 30 people. Um. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm. Uh, it's a very... <laughs> It's what I'm comfortable with, okay. and this has been years of fantasy. Uh, I'm coming out of – it's almost like – I feel like it's a rebuild. Like I last year, now I'm in the rebuilding process, yes. and I feel like yes. I'm going to rise out of the ashes. Mm-hmm. By the way, just to say, when I quit those Browns and like, I, and I said – like, uh, uh, unlike that famous movie, I, I can quit them. Um, they lost to the Raiders, which yeah. had the, the worst – Defense. I mean, that was going to be what was going to put me over the top. Right. Although last season I did have my first 200 point game. Wow. Uh, ever, which was uh, a lot of ups and downs last season. Um, but of course it was with uh, I had um, uh, Will Fuller um when he and um uh oh gosh is this like one healthy Texan, game a year that you Sean get, Watson yeah. yeah Deshaun Watson uh when they had that uh, I think it was like a Thanksgiving Day game where they just lit yes, it up against the Lions. And, uh, yeah. It was my first 200 point game and then I was like something bad's going to happen, something bad's going to happen and then literally like a day later uh, Will Fuller was like, "Oh, I'm gone for the rest of the yeah, season." Yeah, that's usually how it goes. That happens. Yeah. And um so uh I will not draft um any no Texans, Texans running back. No, no Texans at all. It no, 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 like. no. I, w- I will draft Texans running back. I uh, will draft Texan wide receivers and quarterbacks. Okay. They've, they've, they've done well for me. So, okay. Okay. I have no just idea what's going to happen there. Who's going to start there? Just yeah. to put a pin in it, 
um, no Vikings running backs. Right. Texans quarterbacks, okay. okay. Texans quarterbacks, okay. Vikings quarterbacks, okay. Vikings wide receivers, okay. You have yeah. to look into this. Giants running backs, okay. Mm-hmm. Um uh, Cardinals wide receivers, Cardinals wide receivers, yeah, totally yeah. fine. So I mean, it's just it's like a specific groups that I can't touch because they burned me. Okay, yeah. and you know what, a Fuma can't be fooled again. Yes, that's right. So, yeah. So so next Wednesday, at I think it's eight p.m. That's when the draft is. That's when we're going to run this. Okay, so it'll be good. today, as we say. Today, I, a couple players that are of value, I think they're out there. Mike Davis, running backs in Atlanta. You can have. We don't Atlanta. give our entire strategy yeah. away. Oh, okay. It's T. Okay. Higgins going to be a very valuable. Right now. Okay. Not <laughs> very valuable wide receiver, T. Higgins. Okay. okay. Value. I love a good value. Right. And I think, like players like Mike Davis, uh, uh, Corey Davis. T. Higgins. These are Jalen Hurts. I think you're going to be able to get in like Ooh. the sixth round. I think these are. I th- I love. I love a value in fantasy. Football. Okay. Give, give me the official Jerry O'Connell sleeper of the year. Um, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I think with injuries down there now, I think. Um, it's not a sleeper, but no one talks about James. I, I can't believe I'm talking about a Jag. Yeah, you talk- oh no, I you can't, can't do them. it. You can't do it. I, can't quit them. I might take James Robinson now that there's been injuries <laughs> down there takes and everything. Robert one injury to Travis yeah. ATN, and you're like, all right, fuck the no <laughs> I'm Jags. Back. I'm back. <laughs> Marie Jones Drew, never forget. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I love it. Um, sleeper of the year. Um, I don't know. You know, I I would normally would say like Damian Harris up in like it's, uh, um. But I have no idea who JJ Taylor is. I know nothing about him. Undrafted, that other mm-hmm. running back, um, uh, sleeper of the year. I, I I'm 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 not ready to say yet. I'm not ready to give it out. I, I will say this: never draft a Bears kicker ever as long as you live. Yeah. Ever. Yep. Yep. Ever. Yep. ever, ever, ever. Smart. Although ever. Cairo Santos is is good. Ever. But yes. Ever. Yes. Ever. Never. Okay. Ever, ever. It's the moosh. It's what will ruin a team. It will bring down um it will bring down family. It will bring down dynasties. It's like even a very, very good team that yeah. like looks like it could go all the yes. way. Never. Yes. Never. Never. The moosh. Um what else? Oh, I I love I, I love all dolphins. I oh. Love, Okay. I love Gasicki. I think Gaskin's going to be a value running mm-hmm. back. Value. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, I want to defend uh, Hard Knocks. You guys were like yeah. kind of knocking it a little bit. Yeah. I'm really enjoying the season. And that drone shot, I thought, was one of the most awesome things I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just, it was. It's missing, like, I don't know, waiter bringing out a table for Jerry Jones at midfield. A hundred percent. That's really funny. Um, that's a good fellas reference for all you kids out there. But um, um, I, I was – I mean, that's incredible what they do with those drones. And it was um, – it's so fun. Everything's so big in Dallas. It's just, it's so big. Him coming in the helicopter. It's just, mm-hmm. I, I, they're so smart. They go to Mexico and get players. All of Mexico is going to be instantaneously. Why don't the Jets? Why don't the Bears have uh, like uh, go down to other countries and get players? I mean, I don't know because they stink. They can't get players in America. They got to start that first. Um, I think that. So you make a good point. There, there are parts of Hard Knocks that are good, that are entertaining. I would actually be happy if they just made last week's episode just thirty minutes. No, I, I totally and, hear and what take you're out saying. Maybe all the contact lens yeah, drama that, that was they like had. that was, was like much. that was like Saw. That yeah. was too like much. so gross. I can't deal when with were, people touching eyes. Oh, it's so gross. It was like Saw. Yeah. yeah, It was the grossest thing I have just do drone shots. The card doctor Jerry Jones and Trayvon Diggs son. Yeah, but but that Rex Beck stuff was really fun. Yeah. It was really. Uh, um, you know, I will probably stay away from um, Cowboys. Uh, I was a little upset with the Cowboys last season. I thought when um, Andy Dalton was going to come in, you know, to quote Michael Fabiano, he was given the keys to a Ferrari. I thought for sure the Cowboys were going to make a uh, a run for it, but um, nope. Man, they got to do something about that backup position. Yes. That was really uh, and I mean, I mean that we're just talking about the last episode of Hard Knocks. Leave it to the Cowboys to throw an interception in the fourth quarter. It was like, oh boy, it was just like, oh yeah, this you guys are making me laugh so hard, wasting prayers in preseason. Yeah, I mean really it's true, right? Pulling out the God card. That it's was a little really too funny. early. That it's was a little really too funny. early. Like it would be like you, you using God in your in your mock drafts. <laughs> like, you don't want to do that. <laughs> no, no. Save no. it for the real season. Save it for the real draft. I told you I'm using guidance this season. I've narrowed it down to one site. Um, and uh, it seems they're they're inter- some of those uh, some of those fantasy um, like assistance sites. Some of them are really busted. I'm and like uh, no offense to like Eastern Europe or something, but I can tell like 
it's not they're not fantasy yeah it's like you can tell they're the... cutting and pasting stuff and it's like it's almost like a make-believe website and i can't believe i plugged my credit card in there it's <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> deep web shit yeah and it's just like yes this player very good he run fast <laughs> you pick in Second round. <laughs> you like, will take Thurman Thomas. He is very good running. You back. should just log into like chat roulette and just ask random people. <laughs> yeah. That you catch like jacking off. Hey, hey, what do you think about Miles Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> this is you're, you're basically like the the famous drill tweet, which you might not know, but it's like you know someone please help me with my budget, and Jerry O'Connell's like I've you know twenty dollars on drum mats, right? Uh, Fifteen dollars on flights, right? Ten thirty ten thousand dollars on fantasy football guidance. How how am I poor? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's uh, I um, I agree with you. I'm I'm not gonna disagree with you. It's good. I feel like I got a lot out. I really wanted to come back and just tell people how I've moved on from certain relationships and fantasy. Yep. Well, um, it's I mean we love having you here. So let's let's finish it with the with the Mount Rushmore draft. Which oh great. We had the Mount Rushmore of fantasy draft. Sure. Order position. position. Oh, no, 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 no order. No. Order. Yeah. Order. Sure. Uh, which was maybe the dumbest thing we've ever done. Sure. So we're gonna try to. Go even dumber. Okay, we're gonna do the Mount Rushmore of fantasy positions. Okay, it can't be as bad as the uh, the buildings one you guys did. That oh, was oh yeah, was... people didn't like it. People <laughs> Woo, didn't that like was pretty it. painful. Yeah, yeah, people didn't like it. That All right, so you you're you're our guest. So why don't you start? Okay, uh, I'm going to. Uh, I think we talked about it uh, earlier in in the show. Uh, just a defensive player, an individual. <laughs> Defensive that's player. That's your first pick. Okay. Uh, that's my first pick. Yeah. One that's one. Pick. All right, no, 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 no. Not not defenses. Right. Yeah. An individual defensive player. You're defensive talking player. about like taking first a pick. linebacker. Yes. Yeah. First. Um, uh, yeah. I I will um, I will probably be taking a a Brown. Uh, I know I said I was breaking up with them, <laughs> yeah. but it's just a defensive player, yeah. so it's just, totally different. But uh, I am a I am a huge Miles Garrett fan, and I will be taking a Brown. It's different than anybody because on of the what offense. he did to Mason Rudolph. Um. Uh, n not because of what he did to Mason Rudolph. The obviously, violence. No one should choose violence. But I thought that he took the blame for something that was not entirely his fault. Right. I, I think we only saw one side of the story Many there. Many fine people right. on both right. sides. Right. <laughs> I didn't say that, Commenter. I said, um, <laughs> I, I just don't think we heard his story. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. My, I'll go next. Uh, I'll go QB1. Okay. Oh, that's a good pick. Thank you. But, Appreciate it. But a lot of people would say, Matthew Berry would say, why are you taking a quarterback in the first round? I love taking quarterbacks. I mean, he, he fell on his face with that Mike Vick thing yeah. a few years ago. Never never forget that, by the way. Yep. Uh, all right. My first pick is going to you be. You have two picks. Or no, Hank, Hank, Hank's Hank, going. Yeah, Hank. Yeah. Uh, my first pick. You know what? I'm gonna go flex. Okay. Love Shit. flex. Yeah. Love the flex because you gotta you gotta always have it in the back of your mind all season long. And if you have a flex, then nothing is off limits. Like I always season, guess wrong though. On my your flex. season is never truly yeah. over if you have that flex spot. Yeah. All right. You took that one from me. Uh, I'll audible here. I'll go kicker. Whoa. You have all two right. now. Guaranteed never points. Affairs. Get a lot of points. Not from the Bears. Not from the, not Bears, from the Bears, Bears, but if you get a team that's not a great team, they have a bad quarterback, yep. can't can't convert in the red zone, you're going to get a lot of points, minimum like 10, 12 points per game. That, that can win you now, some games. Counterpoint, right. though, sometimes if you're winning your matchup going into Monday night, you might preemptively bench your kicker so that they don't give mm -hmm. you yep. negative points. True. So could that really be a, a Mount Rushmore spot? It's his Mount well, Rushmore. Well, for sure, definitely just based off the numbers, uh, there's really only so many spots on the Mount Rushmore. I don't even think we're going to get 12. <laughs> no, we go bench. But, uh, yeah, I'll go wide receiver two. Okay. okay. Wide um, receiver two. <clears throat> I'm right. about to blow. Wait, no, wait, no Jerry nope. goes back. Now you're trying. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, now i got to figure uh, out what Jerry was about right. to pick. Uh, you'll, never guess, pick. you'll never guess what I was going to pick. All right. All right. Pick I'm going to go. I'm going to go running back two. Okay. Because my running back one always sucks. Yeah. My running back one, it's a Jordan Howard situation. I draft somebody that mm. all the magazines tell me to draft. Let me tell you who is the most exciting RB2 in all of football, maybe in all of history. And this is why we play fantasy football. It's for the juice, okay? Nyheim Hines will score you, I mean, 0.5 points pretty much 15 out of 17 weeks. Mm -hmm. But for two of those weeks... He'll have a three touchdown game, and mm -hmm. that's why we keep coming back. That's that RB exact. two. When you and when Nye, you ha Nye, 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 Hines. Hines. Yeah, and when you when you actually have that running back two in your starting, oh line, god, you feel like a genius. Oh that god, 
you just feel it's euphoric. It's it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. To come into it. It's um, the best. All right, feeling my in the pick. World. I'll go with I'll go with tight end. I like having a good tight end, especially if you have like a really top level tight end. It does feel every year like there's like two or three tight ends, and it just completely falls off a cliff. And you're playing tight end roulette for the entire Gesicki, season. Kasicki value value. You're gonna get that air. Airline value yeah. from Mike Kasicki. Yeah. Okay, you have two picks now. <clears throat> oh, you guys ready for this? Yep. When you play in an ESPN league uh-huh. in the in the 2020 season, and you hear rumors that a tight end on the Saints is possibly going to start at QB, and you lock him in at tight end, oh. and then he's announced as the QB, yeah. but you locked him in and they can't. Kick him out, and the whole team is going apoplectic because you have a QB in your tight end slot, and they're saying it's not fair, it's not fair, and you block them all from your email, and you play a QB in your tight end slot. So I'm going to say tight end, who is actually a QB. Thank you, Taysom Hill. Oh, okay, wow. Okay, yeah. We weren't going to predict that. That's yeah. great. I, yeah, I was not going to choose that That was incredible. Uh, like, on the other hand, you also can have a J.J. Watt who can play tight end from right. a defensive yeah. standpoint. Right. And if yeah. you have him in a defensive player league, oh, money in the bank. Yeah. So money. All right, so your next pick. You have two. Here you have one more. <clears throat> um uh I'm going to go with the if you're in a 2 QB league, uh QB 2. Ooh. Okay. QB okay. 2. Nice. Good pick. Um I can't believe it's still there, but I I guess I'll scoop up RB1. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, you're kind of going chalk here. Well, I mean, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, RB1. It's a good value. Yeah, low RB1. RB1. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go with kind of a, a Swiss Army knife position. I'm going to go with the one that says like W slash R slash T. <laughs> that's, the other flex. That's a flex. No, but there's some leagues where flex is just I mean, wide receivers and running. This is a different flex. It's a weird flex, but okay. Let's well, we're running out of positions. But isn't a super flex? No, no, you can go bench. There's still wide receiver one, defense. Uh, don't tell them. Okay, sorry. No, I, I'm aware that defense is still on the board, but I, I feel like a super flex is a thing. Yeah, okay, sure. then I'll get All a right. super, super duper flex for my next pick. No, it's a, okay, let me look, let me Google super flex. Well, we're talking about a standard Fantasy league. Football. Okay, all right, that's fine. All right, fine. You can have it. You fine. Can have it. You if can you're going to complain flex. about no, it, no, I'll change my answer. Flex. I'm going to take defense, no, all right? Super there's flex. A, there's your boring fucking pick. It's defense. <laughs> You can have defense. super flex. I'm taking the Ravens defense. Sorry, no, Jerry. no, no, no. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Wow! I knew it. I knew it was gonna go. Oh. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do a little little handcuff in here. I'm gonna go te one and te two. Oh wow! Wait, I have <laughs> yes, tight end yes, one. Yes, tight end. Oh fuck! All right, te two. <laughs> <laughs> well, he kind of has te two. Then he had QB two. Oh, he has QB. Uh, no, I had tight end who is a quarterback, oh, <laughs> and you refuse to take him out of that slot, and the whole place goes crazy. And then when it's announced that he's not going to be starting, okay, yeah, you yeah, write an email back specific, like, oh, sorry, okay, specific, just, yeah. just getting these. Okay. All right, so tight end, too. I'll take another kicker just in case. Okay, perfect. Okay, love it. Love it. That's an auto draft. Yeah. I'm yeah. Ki- you take two kick. You have two kick- Well, it's an auto draft. Well, you know when you auto draft and yeah. it just loads up all the spots? Uh, who you can never have too many kickers. kickers. Yeah, that's a fact. No, that's 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 you, you never have too much leg. You only have one kicker yeah. on your no, team. No, no, he's right. It. He's right. I'm, you never I'm, have too much leg. Uh, uh, unless you have, uh, who was a stud last season? Uh, Gay. Uh, who was? Uh, who was like the player who was? Um, who was the amazing kicker? Uh, Blankenship. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. you should never have more than one kicker. It's on. his I, draft, I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm cross talking. Okay. I apologize. I'm okay. Sorry. For for my last. I had a one. fantasy football podcast for a few years, Jerry. That's true. I'm, 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 are you I'm, still I'm doing ashamed. that, Hank? Uh, no, Stephen Shea and Ben Mintz are. Nice. Okay. Uh, my last I'm, I'm one. I'm EPing. I'm gonna I'm gonna take another defense, but ooh, nice. It's gonna be whichever defense <clears throat> I like that. is playing against the Texans. Right. That's a good so, pick. Yeah. So pick. second defense is a great. Pick. So every Such week you pick. you you have a variation of it. I like it. it. And that way you can free up an open roster spot yeah, like for somewhere else. You don't yes. have to spend a high draft pick on uh, on a starting defense. And by the way, I looked up Superflex. Superflex is becoming one of the most popular formats in fantasy football. Have you wow. ever That's used FYI. it? I did. Yeah. When? Last year. What league? My old league. Oh, with okay. the buddies. We also do an auction draft in that one, which I don't care for. Oh god, because yeah, it's nine hours weird. of your life. Yeah, I mean it's nine hours. I, just, I don't uh, have nine hours. I spend all my money in the first like three picks because I just don't want to do it anymore. Um, all right, I'll go with bench. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, you want to add anything to that? Or no, I mean just, I just you know some that's guy every position. Yeah. Be, uh, all right, so I'll go bench. Or you want me to go specific? I'll go bench. 
the guy it would actually be kind of a Darius Slayton type. Uh, the guy that you pick up from you, you look through like who has the most you sort it who has the most points and he had all his points in the first few weeks and you're like oh he's had 60 points this year I'm gonna pick him up and he averages like two points uh, a week afterwards right so that will be my bench guy who I, I pick up think I got a steal but I'm not it's not even close to a steal all right it's my turn um Jerry's on the clock um I I was gonna say defensive player two. But there's, I haven't seen a league with two defensive players yet. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to go with bench player, but let's get into specifics. Bench player who is a player that is like really in his last days in the league, but was on one of your winning teams about 10 years yep. ago. Mm-hmm. That's, so you yeah. just recognize yep. his yep. name. It's the Andre Johnson spot. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you just want him... You just want him on your. You want to you give him a ring, see his another name. ring. Well, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like the Lakers giving Kobe that contract towards the end of the run. It's yeah, like, thank you for all that you've done. Mm-hmm. You keep a spot open for one of your old guys. Jimmy Graham is another spot for that. Yeah, Jimmy Graham. A, you're like, man, Jimmy Graham. This could be a, a is he at the Seahawks now? No, he's still on the Bears. He's still on the Bears. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it. I'm, I'm, that's gonna be my 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 next pick. Okay. Okay. All right. So if Superflex Frank is Gore, a real Frank thing, Gore, give that PFT is, Superflex. For me, that's that's Frank Gore. Yeah. Always draft well, Frank Fra- Gore. Frank Gore, he's still in the league, right? Did he's he retire? still in the league. No, he's an RB two. Uh, yeah. Well, we somewhere. have to have Frank Gore. Frank Gore. That's that's yeah. our rule. What CJ's? We're, we're, we're going to let you. League? We're going to let you. But we have to have Frank for Gore? the groceries. Okay. Yeah. Because you're going to be cooking the dinner, but we okay. have to have Frank Gore. Jake, let PFT have Superflex. If it's something that's real now, then I'm out of date. It's a real. I've thing. Never had it. It's a very real thing. Uh, yeah. So it's QB. It's QB. It's the Super League yeah. of flexes. It's, it's a QB. Just any offensive player. RB. Any offensive player. I think that's what a Superflex is. Yep. Okay. And also the word "super" is in it. It sounds cool. Yeah. yeah that's why. Really, no, that's the only fair. reason that I took it. Uh, yeah, but Wednesday night, Jerry, you're free Wednesday night. Yes. Yeah. You're going to be doing our draft for us. Okay. Can we stream it? Uh, sure. I have to go to a place where I get internet. My kids are on TikTok all the time, so I can't do it at home. And it's just me just yelling like, get off TikTok, get off TikTok. And I don't want to do that if I'm streaming. So uh-huh. uh, if you recall, last year I was at a park. There's a park. There's a 5G tower at a park near my house okay. that I do a lot of like <laughs> streaming and Jerry stuff will under. will be out at night in the park by himself in on a phone. Uh, it might be West Coast, so it'll be yeah, daytime. Yeah, okay, there you go. Late but uh, there's a park uh, right on. Um, it, it's a it's got great 5G. If you guys ever need, if you're like in a pinch and you're in Calabasas, yeah. I know the perfect spot. <laughs> okay, that's beautiful. It does. I mean, it's good. To have hopefully, a place like that. hopefully, I don't think so. Like I believe in science, but if it has anything to do with COVID, that 5G stuff, I'm in trouble. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Deep deep shit. So that's all okay. right, we, you also need to come up with a name for the for the team though. Mm-hmm. Um. Not to put you on the spot, we can talk. We can dialogue offline, as I say in the business world. Yeah, um, maybe something with Billy and Stolen Valor. Oh yeah, Billy's boots. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your cervix. Yeah, we don't want it to be too offensive because it's going to be public. Public. You yes. Know? Yep. Yes. Agreed. All right. Well, Jerry, it's always great to have. I you. I love you guys so much. This I feel like I really like just let it all go. I was yeah. on the couch and I was a little. You could tell I was a little um, tense. Tense when I first got in here. But I had you some got stuff it to get off my chest. And football is back. So excited. And yes. you're doing great in all your relationships. That's what's And you have important. the talk. <laughs> I'm on the talk on CBS. You're, yeah. uh, you you would know what I'm talking about. If we um... The most real show on television. Mm-hmm. Yes. And thank you so much for letting me close out Grit Week. That yeah. was such an honor. Yeah. The grittiest guy we know, Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> Love you guys. Jerry O'Connell is brought to you by our great friends over at Roman. Now that the world's opening back up. So many new thrills are on the horizon, and whether you've been in a relationship for years or if you're just getting started, even if you're just excited to get back out there and meet new people, when the moment comes, you want to be ready. you got to get Roman ready. If you go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool, you can talk to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. With Roman, you get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. If you're Roman ready, it means you've got confidence. You've got the confidence that you know that you can rise to the occasion in the moment. We're looking at the summer of love, and Roman wants to make sure you can participate in your way, whether that's as a single person or a couple that would still rather stay in with each other. You're going to talk to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. They're going to work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, they're going to ship to you with free 
shipping, two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward. It's convenient. It's discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool. Complete an online visit. Take care of ED without ever leaving your home. Complete an online visit today to connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional and take care of it. GetRoman.com slash Barstool. Now here's Mike Florio and Field Yates. Field. Hey, Mike. How's it going? How are you, man? Hang on a second. I'm just... All right. I got something. I got to figure out what's playing on here. <laughs> what the hell? Got it. All right. Good. You got me? I got you now. You hear me Perfect. okay? Yes. For some yeah. reason. I'll, I'll be quick. Are you, you got something. Football 54 was playing on my computer for some reason. One of the better ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can't wait for Super Bowl for the football. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll make it quick. I know you got uh, important stuff to do with your day, so uh, this will be fast. All right. All right. Good deal. Okay, we're cool. muted right now. Field all right, we'll roll in Mike three, to his show. two, one. Uh, I don't even know if this all right, great to be joined by a man. Anybody hilarious. who follows football it's knows he's Mike Florio. He founded the website Pro Football Talk, and you can hear him every morning, Monday through Friday, first from seven to nine a.m. on PFT Live on Peacock TV, and then nine to eleven on NBC <laughs> Sports so Network. And Mike also fantasy, in dude. just about six months or so, your book Playmakers. <laughs> Uh, will be released. Uh, it's <laughs> out on March 15th. You can pre-order it right now. How's everything going, Mike? Well, you know, I and, and Field, it's great to be with you. I just got the final version on PDF of the book, so it's becoming more and more real every day. And now I have to proofread no, it no place yet another research. time to make sure there isn't a typo in there. It is like looking for a needle in a haystack, but uh, the search for the needle continues. Well, I've seen you break down contracts and legal situations in the NFL, so I know you'll find any last-minute edits there. Uh, I think one of the stories of the NFL preseason has been the five rookie quarterbacks. Not going to ask you for predictions on when they become starters or things like that, but just based off of some of the things we've seen so far, is there one that you feel like might be best set up for early success based off the fit? Well, I look at it this way. The first two guys, Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson, they're going to be week one starters with Trey Lance and Justin Fields. Who knows when we're going to see them on a regular basis. I wouldn't be surprised to see both of them play in packages, especially Lance. We know that by now, but even Fields, I think there'll be too much of a push to get him on the field in some capacity, even if Andy Dalton's a starter. Mac Jones is the one that intrigues me the most because when you look at the quality of the team, that they have in New England, and you look at the way that he fits that offense. In the preseason, it, it almost looks like there's a robot back there. That's how efficient his movements are and his reads and his checks and the way he throws the football. And I don't think it's an accident that Bill Belichick, the coach of the Patriots, has changed his tune so dramatically in such a short period of time from Cam Newton being the starter to Bill Belichick being undecided on who the starter is. I think Cam Newton's status is unvaccinated. In reality, he's tested every day and can be knocked out on any given day, on game day of any given week, especially week four when the Buccaneers come to town. I just think that Mac Jones is creeping closer and closer to being the week one starter. And when you have Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels, the roster they have, the history they have, how can you, how can you be in a better position if you're a rookie quarterback? Uh, so while the world is seemingly in a little bit further ahead state compared to where we were around this time last year with COVID, I don't know that we're out of the uh, sort of out of the woods in the NFL. Do you think it's possible that COVID could play even a more impactful role this year on the league than it did last season? Well, I think it definitely will, Field. We've been talking about the unvaccinated players, the fact that there's still seven percent or thereabouts who refuse to get the vaccine and the reality that they are tested every single day. The fact that they have, if they have close contact with an, un, uh, with an infected person, they're automatically out five days. There is this possibility of key players being gone at any given moment. I don't think we're going to get to the point where we've got so many players who are out that a team can't play and we have to move games around. We could get that. I don't think we're going to have a game that's wiped out. But I could see a day or two movement like we saw last year. But th this, this notion that maybe a game will be completely scratched, I hope is not going to be an issue. Now, the league wants to test vaccinated players more frequently, going to a one-week 
uh, testing protocol, the union has floated the idea of doing it every day. If they would ever test vaccinated players every single day, then that could get very interesting because if everybody's tested every day and the restrictions aren't in place for the vaccinated players to move wherever they want to move and they potentially can get infected and that could get to a point where a lot of guys would be out at any given time. So the more often they test the vaccinated players, the more guys I think will be out on a given game. But, you know, look, it's whatever the rules are. People don't like the rules. The rules are what they are. But the more often they test the vaccinated players, the more disruptive it's automatically going to be. It feels like around this time every year we're singing the same tune. The defending champion is in a good spot to succeed and repeat, and yet it hasn't happened in nearly 20 years. Could the Bucks be the exception? It hasn't happened since Tom Brady was quarterback in the Patriots all the way back from 2003 to 2004. It feels – I think what's so funny is that the I think it's just fact that it has been 17 years makes us wired to say it can't happen. I can't happen. It's been too long. It doesn't happen anymore. I remember when I was growing up, you just kind of accept the fact that the king of the hill stays on the hill for a couple of years. And it was the exception when somebody didn't repeat. And now we've gone 17 years. They they brought everyone back. First time since the late 70s that all starters are back on both sides of the ball. They addressed an area of kind of need. Gio Bernard there last year. It was a little Sean McCoy. It was Leonard Fournette. It kind of ping-ponged around now that they're very happy with him everyone else is back I picked the Buccaneers to win it last year just dumb luck close your eyes throw a dart I thought they'd play the Patriots in the Super Bowl so I was you know half right and half completely nuts (laughs) but but I'm getting closer and closer to the moment of truth field I'm probably going to pick them to win it again I can't think of a reason not to. You definitely have to pick them to get there out of an NFC that isn't nearly as top heavy as the AFC. The question is, can they win against the best team that the AFC has to offer? And that should make for a great Super Bowl in Los Angeles. Yeah, a repeat Super Bowl would probably be very entertaining to most football fans. All right, Mike, I want to ask you about your last and favorite topic here, your fantasy team. How Stop. many fantasy teams are you playing in this year? And uh, how good is your team looking? Come on. I, I get the, the shakes. I get the shakes anytime this comes up because you know what the guys on Pardon My Take do. They they find creative ways to get me to talk about my fantasy team so they can say nobody gives a damn about your fantasy team, although they, they use other language than that. I've got two leagues, if you care, and you probably don't. But uh, the drafts are coming up. I like to do the drafts as late as possible because you never know when injuries are going to happen. So, you piece of shit. Give a fuck. No one cares, I Mike. Oh. I was set up. No one cares. <laughs> I was set up. You motherfuckers. Ow. You're going to have you trust issues. You motherfuckers. <laughs> That's good. You led, you led that book. That's good. <laughs> you've, so, you've solicited help from the outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> bastards. Good answers. Good answers hey, everybody, buy ones. playmakers. Order as penance for what you've done to me. I want a big push <laughs> yeah, for okay. everyone, okay. all of the award-winning listeners, to pre-order playmakers right now. Please. Well, no, but don't don't order playmakers until you've read Quarterback of the Future, yes. your first novel. Mike, no, that, that's, you're not going to find that. That's Mike, gone. I think you I've have got, the only copy. I think so. Yeah. Playmakers Mike, are, is, is going to be available to anyone who wants it and many who don't. I can't believe that you even like said, hey, the guys on part of my take always fuck with me, but here's my fantasy Perfect. league set up. I now, what are you doing? Which, which you never well, answer the question. Because who expects Field <laughs> He's the to perfect allow guy. himself credit to be to, used this way? Credit to Field. I thought about it for like a few weeks. I was like, who is the perfect guy who is trustworthy that Florio will fall directly in the trap? And you did it again. You did it again. Well, he he sets me up for a fantasy show. Well, <laughs> Blake actually, said it's a fantasy show. Actually, since we have you both here, and, and Mike, you don't, we don't really care from you, but Field, can you actually give our listeners some fantasy sleepers and some advice? I hear it. Don't do it, Field. No, don't, don't do it. No, 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 we want to no, hear, hear from Field. He's an expert. I, I will do this, by the way. And I first time that I reached out to Mike, which was late last week, you responded immediately in a way that made me think you were on the scent a little bit because you were like, sure, I'll join, but what's it all about? And I was like, fuck, all right, now I got I to gotta <laughs> think of something that's creative enough to, uh, to make sure that y- you will maintain your obligation on Monday afternoon. So uh, if we do on Fantasy Sleepers, I think I might 
this page a little bit because I'm trying to go through it of names people either know or names that people have no idea about. And because there's so much interest in the NFL, a lot of names are not necessarily sleepers. They're just undervalued names. So uh, Dan, uh, Darnell Mooney with the Chicago Bears. Mm-hmm. Big Cat obviously knows all about him. Fast. If Justin Fields takes the rain sooner rather than later, I think that offense is good enough to maybe have two relevant wide receivers. Jacoby Myers for the Patriots, uh-huh. if they get much better play. And Florida was just telling us about how Mac Jones, as we all have seen, has looked good this preseason, has a chance to uh, lead the way, as I can see him just about to vomit on front of his computer. Uh, Dan Arnold from the Panthers, <laughs> a tight end. And I'll give you two more names that you know already know. A.J. Dillon from the Packers, second-round pick last year. He's just too good to keep off the field. Aaron Jones is back. Uh, maybe a couple of years from now, it's A.J. Dillon running the show by himself. But – I think A.J. Dillon is going to run through defenders all season this year. And then Kenyon Drake for the Raiders. Everybody knows him already, obviously. But um, they're going to have to find some way to score points this year because their defense is not stopping anybody. And they paid Drake too much money to not utilize him. So those are my sleepers. I got them all from Florio. I love so that. <laughs> Let me tell you, let me tell you. Yeah, good That's advice. Great advice, Field. 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 Appreciate that. I, I've been burning that is up like over this salt one. Hey, Mike, being Mike, rubbed can, into Mike, the wound. I have, for to, a second? I've I have to witness for him expert. talking about fantasy football. After you guys have burned me again, I got to sit through <laughs> an actual legitimate fantasy football. I, I, I have fucking kid. Field's an expert. I actually, Mike, I texted Field. My exact text was after the reveal. We're going to ask you some real questions right in Florio's face. So Thanks. that's this portion of uh, the interview. Field, I, I had a question. Like, I'm trying to struggle. I'm struggling with whether or not I can trust any Panthers wide receiver. Given, like, is Sam Darnold going to have a year? Like, am I going to am I going to be able to trust that offense to score points, or is it like stay away from DJ Moore at all costs? I think I would actually be more in than out this year on the Panthers wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm a little bit nervous about the overall volume coming down. Robbie Anderson had like the quietest 95 catch season. He really did in NFL history last year, but. Christian McCaffrey played just three seasons. So McCaffrey, if you assume he's on the field, probably going to have like 120 or so targets, which you take away the volume a little bit from someone like uh, Robbie Anderson, a little bit more from DJ Moore. But as as much as Sam Darnold's a huge question mark after what he did during three seasons in New York, it's not like he's, you know, taking over a job from Tom Brady or something. He's replacing Teddy Bridgewater and PJ Walker from last season. So I think there's actually a lot of reasons this Carolina Team could be sneaky. Like, I don't think they're good enough to compete with the Bucs or even make a playoff push at all, but they're going to score a lot of points this year. So I'm actually sort of generally speaking in on this offense. All right, so last question for you, Field. So I assume you've done a couple fantasy drafts. Uh, who did you who did you take in your first round in one of your, one of your drafts? Yeah, so I've done too many. To It's really kind of a pathetic excuse of a life I lead over here. But uh, it's good, depending on where you go, the first five picks are probably in most drafts going to end up being – Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, and Zeke Elliott, likely in that order. With Saquon Barkley not being a certainty for week one, there are some people that are concerned about using a high pick on him. And uh, so I think usually those are the first five picks that I've seen. So that, those have been a couple of the guys that I've been targeting. But specifically, like you're, you're, let's say you're, you're the league you care about the most, who'd you end up with your quarterback? So I've got a, so we have, we play in this war room league. It's a 16 team league at ESPN. All the names that you know, people involved. Uh, it's the most competitive league that I play in, and probably in part because of the pride uh, more than anything else. I've got the 14th pick on Wednesday night, so I have not. I mean, I've got a lot of research to do. Yeah, Florio. If 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 Florio talks no, to me ever know. again after yeah. this, then yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll solicit a couple yeah, of thoughts know. there. But uh, I need some help. But do you have like, any teams? Have you had you have any drafts that you've done? I'm specifically like, who do you have on your team right now? I'm interested. I haven't done any. I have not done any drafts yet okay. for leagues that are being played. Like I've done keeper leagues or dynasty leagues where you do them early. Ooh, in who'd the you keep? Who'd you keep? How can you uh, ask these questions with a straight face? What do you mean? Shut face? up, Mike. Shut up. I want to know I who know we kept. Shut so up. I've got one team where you know, sort of every league has a different setup in terms of how many keepers you yeah. have. Dalvin Cook is my. Uh, there's a league Ooh. where I get to keep one. Dalvin Cook was the keeper oh, there. Nice. Not too much choice. Effort went into that one. I love it. Um, Joe Mixon and Kyler Murray were my two on Ooh. another that I was able to keep. And then I've got a couple of dynasty leagues where you keep everybody, right? So the only way that you lose a player is if you cut him and then he, if, if, you, if someone else picks him up, he's theirs forever. Um, so you've got a league where it's like my team is like Kittle and Odell and, and David Montgomery. And 
uh, players like that that are mine in perpetuity. If I Love keep them it. every year, that's my right. If not, then uh, they're on to somebody else's roster. I could. I don't know about everyone who's listening right now. I, I assume they all agree with me, but like I could listen to Field talk about his teams. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm having fun. Listen, you are never going to get me again. You're okay. going to have to get Roger okay. Goodell involved. You're going to have to get the ghost of Pete <laughs> Rozelle involved Mike, last, next time. Last year, I got your son involved. You don't think I can get you again? <laughs> yeah, the only way it's going to happen is if you get Goodell. That's it. Okay. That's uh, it. Okay. Mike, you, you are underestimating us. Yeah. We I, don't have, we have a, many this tentacles was, this was to touch time. every part this of was your good. life. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even feel that. I didn't feel I, – I would have never expected it of all the people in the business field as the last one I would have expected what, it from. The best so, part well, about this is, is Mike, you're just going to be walking around paranoid your entire life, basically. Anybody that even mentions the word fantasy to you, <laughs> you're going to be oh. like, those sun- – where are they? Where are and they? Like, you're you know, check behind what, your tweet from the other night – if I was smart, it would have given me the clue when you sent me your lineup and asked for me yeah. to give you input. What'd you think about that? What'd you think about my lineup, Mike? Well, I, I don't know. It's as bad as mine's going to be. All right. <laughs> but, but I should have realized, I should have realized that, that this was happening. I should have realized I need better spider sense. You don't even, you don't realize any of this because I know when Field asked you to come on and I then texted you about something completely unrelated an hour later just to give you a little like, oh, in communication about something different. So it's always a pleasure, Mike. Yeah, great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, you Field. You're a champion, Field. We appreciate it. We'll have you back on to talk fantasy. Okay, let's wrap up the show. We've got uh, the rowback question. It is the last question of the show. The rowback question. Use code PFT on rowback.com for 20% off your first purchase. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Code PFT. They make the best performance polls, the only performance polls we wear. And for our guests today, we'd like to gift you a rowback performance Q-zip on us. Our guest being Hank. Because Hank, my question to you is, do you have the guys on checks ready? I do, and I do also have a lot of rowback gear. I've been playing a lot of golf, and the golf course I go to is kind of like I just I just play by myself and get paired up with random people. I always wear rowback, and they always compliment me. They love it. They're like, what, what is this rowback that's high quality, super comfortable, long sleeve, short sleeve, just perfect. It's literally perfect uh, golf, uh, golf attire yep. and regular attire. And a little tip for everyone out there, uh, I've been on the black t-shirt diet. And uh, my black t-shirts are almost all rowback. So if you're like, oh, you're looking skinny. Well, it's the black t-shirt, but it's the rowback black t-shirt. Hey, what, what do the cart girls have to say to your rowback gear? Do you want any drinks? Yeah. Is that what they're calling it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, you are. I like you, you want some of this so liquid gold. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I, I, I'd like to point out real quick. So weird. Before we get into it, the fantasy football thing with Jerry. So uh, change of pace. We're not doing the draft tomorrow. I just found out uh, the the text thread in CJ McCollum's league has been going nuts. It got moved to Saturday, so it won't be on. It won't be today. Okay. Which is what we discussed with Jerry. So it's going to be on Saturday instead. Also, breaking news from that text thread, uh, Jerry Ferrara Turtle. When I told him that CJ or that that uh, that Jerry was going to be drafting for us, he just replied, "LMFAO, I've been in like 400 leagues with Jerry <laughs> since 2004." Holy and shit! And I, I was like, "Has he ever won?" And he goes, "No, I don't think so." Oh no, no chance, no chance. All right, guys, on checks to finish us off. And sorry, Florio, but he's never going to trust anything we ever do ever again. He's like constantly going to be flinching around yep. us. But we will get him next year. Hey, cat, commenter, cake, Hank, Bill, and Bubba. I just started a new job and suffer from terrible anxiety, which caused me to not be able to swallow my food when eating and start choking. What? Any advice on how to consume food more effectively? Soup. Very easy answer. Soup. Soup. You you, you drink it. You don't Wait. have to chew it. Is this? <laughs> I couldn't tell if this was like one of the movie ones. I want this anxiety. Like, give me that so I just can't eat. Uh, I would say just embrace the fact that you're going to be skinny and hot for summer 2022. I also think that that could be kind of an advantage in certain business situations. If you go out to lunch with somebody and you're like, no, I'm not going to have anything. That that throws somebody off. Yeah. Right from the start. Puts Tommy them off balance way. a little bit. Never order first when you're at a lunch for, for uh, work. Always let the boss order first because then they, they set the tone. Whether you're going steak, beer, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. You never want to be the guy who's like, yeah, I'll have the 40-ounce porterhouse and a beer at like 1 o'clock. Is this a real thing, though, that... That you like lose the ability to produce was it you can't swallow? Yeah. I've had a couple girlfriends that I think had bad anxiety. Yeah. Tons. New work new work anxiety. 
Uh, I work for a very blue collar company, but in a managerial role. Uh oh. So more white collar day to day work. I have a mechanic who reports to me who smells like complete ass. I have discussed the issues at length with him and don't know what else to try. I talk to him. He's better mm -hmm. for a few weeks, then goes back to smelling like shit. He does good work, and solid diesel mechanics are hard to find these days. All of my other employees come to me with the, uh, hey, how much longer are you going to allow this to type to continue stuff? How much longer are you going to allow this to continue type stuff? What do I do? Side note, I know why he smells. He has a makeshift farm with 25 plus dogs and other animals living in his house. Billy? Side side note, he drove to another state a few months ago to buy a miniature bull. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, all right, so here's my tip because this happened to us at Barstool Sports. Um, I'm not going to talk about anyone who smells bad because everyone smells great. But did you guys get surprised by the new automatic air fresheners in the bathroom? I, yes, I, I didn't, didn't know what even know. I, w I went to take a piss, and all of a sudden, the back of my neck was wet. And I was like, what the fuck? And I turned around, and there's clearly, there's a big, like, industrial size air freshener that I think just automatically goes off every 15 minutes. Install one of those in that guy's house when he's sleeping with his 25 animals, and maybe by a like his workstation because that yeah, shit just scared me. probably just in his workstation i actually think that if you're a diesel mechanic it's it's probably a good thing that means that you're the best diesel mechanic if you don't smell good i think it's the animals like you know how billy smells yeah i, I know i get that for sure but i don't think i want my diesel mechanic to yeah be smelling you're fresh. right it's like i don't want to walk into a restaurant and there's a skinny chef right i want somebody that looks like they live and breathe that shit mm -hmm. that's true my boss is a good friend of mine. He actually helped me get the job. We golf almost every weekend, and when we ride in the same cart, he will constantly ask me about work shit. Usually he asked me if I had completed a task. Usually I hadn't, oh, so it caused me to make a call, text, email. Usually I try to just change the subject or act like I didn't hear him, oh, but is there any other way I can get out of the work talk on the golf course? If you guys could tell him to fuck off, that would be great. Also, because he tells me what to do at work, he will always ask me to help him find his ball or to pull the pin for him, that's got to stop. Whoa. I mean, that, that's just sportsmanship to an extent. Pull, yeah, you pulling gotta a be, pin for someone. you got to be careful. Find his ball, though? If, if they're both like... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but it, I guess how like If you how lost often? your ball, I would help But I wouldn't be it. like, Hank, go get my ball. No, no. Right, if like, that's if, what's If you happening. weren't looking and right. you made me look, that would be different. I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to be looking with you. I think you have to stop playing this game and you have to just fake an injury. And then just golf on your free time because that sounds miserable. Either that or, or start betting him like a lot of money per hole responsibly, and then that way you guys are just talking shit to each other. Mm -hmm. That when you step on the course, it should be just like a, a locker room where it's okay, it's shit talking time with the boss. We're not on the clock. You need to make a move that really sets it aside as being guys' time. Either like shotgun a beer on the first hole, get it start right off the bat. You know that's play time. Yeah. Or just make a very large bet with him, get his mind focused on something else. Or just try to kiss him in yeah. the middle of your round and be like, I always get horny when I play golf. And then he'll never invite you back. <laughs> something about the holes. Yeah. This October will be my 10th year working at my engineering firm. What percent raise should I be asking for? Ooh, I don't know what engine. What do engineers do? They Are they, they are like those to train people? They bridges. solve like all the world's problems, I think. Do they... They make bridges, right? Boston Dynamics. They 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 make bridges, but like it's it's from making bridges to deciding where the toilet goes in a uh, like big building. Yeah, or like a cruise ship. Yeah, they. I think engineers are very smart. I I have nothing but respect for engineers because I know they're way smarter than me. What about software engineers? I feel like that's stolen valor. That's also very smart. It's very smart, but I think that. Engineers to me implies that you're you're building something tangible. Have you guys ever met an architect in the wild? I've met architects before back when I was working in real estate, but like have you met an architect in the wild? I don't think so, no. They are rare people. Like you've met doctors, you haven't met architects. My neighbors growing up are architects. Okay, so that counts as one. What do you say, Billy? They're also like sometimes assholes. Architects? Yeah, because yeah, they think well, they're like artists. They're, well, no, yeah, they are. They're god of their building. Correct. Yeah. And they also Just like... blueprints for days. Oh, you know what I really want to do? Like, 
I, I would just like to, at one point in my life, walk around with one of those giant tubes that has a blueprint inside of it. Mm -hmm. You look super fucking important if you're walking down the street. with. Yeah, rolling out a, a blueprint on a big conference table, that's that's the shit. Mm -hmm. That's what you go to architect school I want, for. I want to do that, roll out the blueprint, or be at a table that's got a map on the table and I'm moving like things around, like strategy and logistics. All I remember from architects is they always wore sweaters and they always got in fights with the general contractors who would be like, this building doesn't make sense. Like you, like none of this is gonna make sense. They'd be like, well, this is my vision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the question? Oh yeah. Uh, how, how much are you know. asking for? I don't know, what's, what, what is your- 50%. <laughs> okay. okay. Love it. Is yeah. that like a 10 year thing? Either and that, if and if they don't give it to you, lean in for a kiss, and then if they kiss you, just say sexual harassment. Or fifty percent raise. Ask for the kiss, or be like, you don't have to give me a raise, but can the next building gets named after me? Oh, I like that. That way, your I name think that's lives how on Trump forever. Started. Yep. When do we get to see Coach Doug's again? Ooh. This was, this was oh, just in the that's in the not questions. Guys and checks, well, he's yeah. he's been on a, a barnstorming tour. Of, he's throwing up first pitches. Yeah. Did you see uh, Madden added a college mode for ten teams? Uh they had that. Oh, not to. What was the big? It was like it, today. it was. Yeah, they they've had that, and you basically get to be like the quarterback for Oregon, and you get to play uh, two playoff games and then get drafted. Um, Got it. There's a chance I've had a couple conversations with people, uh, people in power here who uh, would like to see it come back. We'll see. I'm never saying never. It's. I, I'm not going to Urban Meyer retire on you guys. I'm going to be honest and say there will probably be another season. It the last dance. It feels to me, and I don't want to step on toes here, but it, it's something that you would bring back when it's not an actual football season. Correct. Going oh, on. no, definitely not during football. Yeah. No, 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 absolutely not. Here's a guys on chicks on checks. Hey, PMT boys. Lady boss. So I accidentally fucked my coworker's dad at a bar this weekend. Accidentally. And it also turns out. How do you accidentally fuck well, someone? You can fall down at just the right Long angle. Dick. Yeah. It also turns out he's my dad's cousin. Oh. What wait, wait, do? wait. So uh, that means that he's your that's cousin. That's your second cousin. That's a, that's a great example of just like complete. You're in complete denial right yeah. now. Yeah. He's related to my dad, so that's kind of fucked up. I barely know my dad. <laughs> so your coworker is also your cousin. Porter's Wait, dad. Yes. Your co worker yes. Yeah. No, your coworker is your like third cousin or second cousin once removed. Cause you're you're the once guy you, you in, once you get into parents' cousins is when things you, get so confused. Uh, no, but you me. fucked your cousin. You fucked your coworker's dad. Yeah, but that's your the, cousin. The dad who's cousins with that your dad. Make you the, also cousins, second cousins, I believe. Isn't so like that you, second cousins? Second cousins. I can never get the cousins yeah, removed. That's, like, I've been to family Google events it. where it's like, this is my, my dad's, like, this is my cousin, and they have kids, but they're never like, this is your cousins. I Did think you it's fuck like any of them? Third cousin, no. Okay. That's weird, no big cat. That's Ooh. weird yeah, that you're taking such that a is, strange. That is a weird interesting question. Interesting, Hank's <laughs> sex life. Where does the once removed that's come That's what I'm going to look right now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just What is, oh, is it a divorce? I don't know. No, I don't think divorce has anything to do with it. I just okay. think like that means uh, that you haven't fucked yet if you're once right. removed. Uh, second cousins, it means that the closest ancestor that the two people have in common is a grandparent. If they were any more closely re related, they would be. S wait, second cousins means. Okay, so John, wait, fuck, this doesn't. All I right. think that's first cousins. Yeah, that, what the hell? Yeah, first cousins share a grandparent uh, with each other. First cousins share a grandparent with each other. Second cousins share a great grandparent. Three J. That's right. So this is first cousin once removed. This is your cousin once removed. You fucked your cousin. No, this is your second cousin. It's your dad's cousin. So that means they their cousins share grandparents. Yes. So, so that means yeah, you, you share fuck, great grandparents. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's second cousin. Okay. Yeah. That's once removed. Still, no, I don't think there's a remove. Still better than FDR. We really give FDR a pass. Dude, what about Einstein? On, but more important, like, can you? He's the smartest guy in the world. And he fucked his. He married his cousin. Can you imagine if somebody running for president today, they were married to their cousin? Yeah, actually, that I could. would probably. <laughs> actually, unfortunately, I could. That would probably nip the campaign in the bud. Um, mm -hmm. but Einstein, dude, didn't he marry his cousin? Yeah. He He's did. the smartest guy in the world. Smartest guy in the Maybe world. Maybe he knows something. We all right. So there you go. There's your answer. Einstein did it, and look where he got. Smartest guy ever. All right. Last one. Hey guys, it's Snacks. Code name. Snacks. I'm the new guy at work and started using the refrigerator in the break room. And when lunch comes around, I go for my sandwich and it's gone. 
What do you guys think <laughs> I should do? I'm the new guy, pretty quiet about it, but it's really starting to piss me off. I love yeah, it. no, that's Any advice? Thanks, guys. It's we snacks. do this to Pete. It's we fucked do this up. To all business. You Pete. got you got to lightly poison it, mm -hmm. not to an extent where it'll cause serious permanent damage. Yeah, but like put put something a little gnarly. No, in don't even. You don't have to do poison, quote unquote. It could just be some uh, shit that causes diarrhea. Oh, it could be some flatliner sauce. Just spread oh, that on the inside. That's good. Really hot. And that way you'd also be able to tell exactly who ate your lunch. Also, the person who's eating the lunch, be a respectable human. Like what we do to All Business Pete, if we eat his sandwich, I think Roan does it a lot. He just leaves a $5 bill in the fridge. Mm -hmm. That way it's not even <laughs> like you're stealing it. Yeah, right. You just com It's totally fair. Billy, uh, you look like you had something to say about the lunch, lunch gate. Lock all the doors. No one leaves till you find out. Ooh, okay. I like it. All right, Billy, give me like the top level recap because it was a long show. Um, did Dan Campbell keep a punter on his squad when he cut two kickers? I think so. Probably. So is that who's going to be kicking the Maybe. field goals? That Jack would be a good move. That would also be a big Dan Campbell move to be like, D you kick a ball, they kick a ball. What's the difference? Right, there? and also be like, this is actually efficiency because mm -hmm. I'm saving a roster spot and then the punter misses every extra point. And like, whoops. Dan Campbell probably also saw that that highlight clip from the Texans preseason game where they had the safety kickoff. And yeah. He's like, we're just going to do that. We're going to do that. Have a real football player do Genius. it. Genius. Uh, shout out Chef Donnie and Bobby Lang for big wins at uh, Rough and Rowdy. Yo, shout Should out. have done that on Sunday. Yep. Uh, she's at the Rizzo. Oh, did also you get in trouble? No, I just I meant to do it on Sunday, but I forgot. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Oscar Pistor Pistorius what, gets Cherry out. Bomb? No. This is shout out Billy, by the way, for he was. I did he, nothing. He was drunker than Chef Donnie. After Before winning the fight, fight. yeah. yeah. No, and after. Chef Dine told me that you were like a great guy to have in the corner. Yeah. You were in war mode by proximity. Uh -huh. It was great. It was Story of so your hard. life, actually. It, it kind of means that you want to get back in the ring. Oh, Billy definitely wants to fight again. And we want, but except he's looking a little small. No, I'm, who says I'm not going uh, down a weight class? Oh, I, there, are, there are no weight classes. <laughs> Jake, <laughs> Jake's Billy dad. Billy? Ooh. Jake's dad came Billy. in to the office today. Introduce himself to Billy. The first thing he said was, "You look a lot smaller in person than I thought you would be." You know what? For the awesome. natural alpha. When you move out of your house and start like <laughs> paying your own grocery bills, like it's very hard to maintain the calories. mass. <laughs> yeah, you're, blam is, you're wait, blaming your parents. It used to be that no one could spot you in your kitchen squat rack. Now you have Ben Mintz, and now you're saying this. Well, I'm trying to get up there, Billy. I will buy. I will. I will fund your milk budget. Oh, perfect. Will that help? Yeah, that will help. Okay. So I'm you get back as, to whole milk. You get as much milk as you <laughs> want. You tell me at the end of the month, I want an itemized actual receipt of how much milk you <laughs> if drink. I, if I expense, can I yeah, expense? No, no, milk? no. I'm saying you're expensing to me. So okay. at the end of every single month, September 1st today, mm -hmm. at the end of September, you come up to me and you have a list of every milk that you purchased and drank. I will pay for it. Perfect. That's okay. going to be a lot of milk. I know. I, I just want to see the list. I want to see how much milk this guy fucking the drinks. The only limiting factor is that we know that Billy knows that it's physically impossible to drink more than two glasses of milk in an correct, hour. That's correct. <laughs> it's You know that challenge, it was, right? Yeah. It was from that um, <laughs> no, Parks and Rec episode. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Jake's dad has 25. 83. 99. Eight. 69. 18. I can't Cam wait to see six. how much milk you drink. What's Camel the over-under? Camels can I swim. What's the over under for gallons? I think Billy can go through twenty. Can gallons we do of milk. any dairy products? No. Oh, what wow, this is really expensive. I want this ice is, cream. Yeah. Okay. That's well, what I have. Been I said buying. I'd pay for you're your milk. Buy, you're gonna okay. buy Jenny's ice Make cream. Make your own and you're ice cream buy, yeah, with the milk. Like the That's most expensive goat idea. cheese in yeah. France. Make your ice cream. Okay. Earn right. it. Or just drink so much milk you don't want your your little cum belly of milk isn't. <laughs> Doesn't want any ice cream. Or just go outside when it's cold and chug <laughs> chug Stop milk. Same there. same thing. Uh, Turn it on. So Blake Griffin oh, was in the studio today. He might have sabotaged the lotto machine. Uh oh. Oh wait. All right, we got it. All right, here we go. Okay. Ninety-nine, eight. Jake's dad is twenty-five. Six, if Jake's dad hits this. Billy, you have to drink skim milk for the entire month. It defeats the purpose. Yeah, I. I Sixty-four. 64. 64. So close. Jake, is that score It's not, but he's going to be mad at himself because that's probably a second number. That was the year he was born. Oh, oh damn. Way to dox your dad, Sorry, dude. Mr. Marsh. Wait, is his name, his name's not Randy, is it? No. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be so cool if your dad was Randy Marsh. Love you guys. <laughs> oh, Billy, I'm so excited to see how much milk you drink.